What's the best way you've seen someone rebel against school rules? A buddy of mine was caught messing with his phone during class. Back then, the school rules were that, if you were caught, your phone was confiscated for an entire day, and you couldn't get it back until the next day, this was before smartphones, and the rules have changes, since the 10 years, that I graduated there, so, buddy hands in his phone, but doesn't seem too worries about it, he waits a couple of classes until lunch break, and asks me to come with him, he's gonna get his phone back. We go to the staff room, where the confiscated phones were held, and asks a teacher there, if he could copy down a phone number into my phone, so he could call his dad later that day, teacher agrees, and gives him the phone. I hand him mine, and we wait for him to copy the number. When he's done, he gives me mine back, and sticks his own phone in his pocket point he was known as a bit of a joker, so when he jokingly said, welp, thanks a lot, sire, the teacher immediately laughs tells him to stop messing about and to give the phone back. Laughing and joking about being caught, he does but not really. See, he had a second phone, exact same model, except this one was broken. Wouldn't charge anymore, he said. So, when he stuck his good phone in his pocket, it was right next to the broken one. When the teacher made him give back the phone, he just gave back the broken one point it was the best switcheroo I have ever seen in my time at that school. He was so fluent, so nonchalant about the whole thing. It was amazing to see. So I went to high school in South Texas, an area in which it almost never snows. For me, this doesn't mean anything but I have lived in most of the north for my life, so I know what it's like to play in snow point however, somehow it ended up snowing overnight. And by snowing, I mean like what snow looked, like in the north deep, and not just thin and watery. These were immensely heavy flakes we were all sure that they would cancel school because Texas does not have salt machines or snow plows and the roads were super slick. A lot of parents didn't want their kids to go to school because they didn't feel comfortable with a bunch of new high school drivers on ice point yet alas they of course did not cancel school. A little rain knocks out our whole district, but a foot of snow and nothing point my mother made us take the bus, because although she felt comfortable driving in snow being from Illinois, Texas drivers are more aggressive and the roads weren't properly cleared. I took the bus, and it was like, being on a safari tour. Kids were taking pictures of the icicles on trees and sheet, all wide-eyed. It was funny point once we got to school, though, the campus looked like a war zone. No one would go inside, and had instead resorted to snowball fights on the entire campus, and parking lots. Once the bell rang, of course no one went inside. I watched from the window as the vice principal went to the front of the school, and commanded the kids inside, of course getting mailed in his boulder's head by snowballs. He finally managed to round up the rogue kids and we all went about first period. I had a relaxed teacher who knew no one would pay attention. Since half the class was missing anyway, she let us act out the civil war with snowballs and took us outside point. While we were playing outside, we all paused as we heard the fire alarm went off. The school came pouring out for the next two periods dude that pulled the fire alarm is a legend and lives on at our school till this day. He did in fact get arrested, along with another kid that thought ITD be smart to throw ice at a cop point. That was the one time I saw the high school completely not have a handle on anyone. So we had this dude Kyle. His name is not Kyle, but he absolutely had Kyle energy. He looked like a typical low income stoner kid, long hair, ripped clothes slash jeans, beat up shoes, bellies, and socks with weed stuff on M point now Kyle was a peculiar kid who spent half his time in detention, rarely ever showed up to tests, and when he did, would just straight sleep through them. He was pretty rambunctious, kinda funny, but ultimately was one of the troubled children. He was a low flyer as the assistant principal called him, when we talked, since I was also a low flyer. It meant he got in trouble but nothing serious like drugs or fighting, though everyone thought slash knew he was a pothead. One of my all time favorite stories of Kyle was in our world history class, the teacher absolutely hated him. They always got into it, and honestly, the man would talk very patronizingly to Kyle and the dude snapped back. Our teacher said get out. Now and Kyle proceeded to go to the other side of the room from the door. When the teacher asked him what he was doing he yelled getting my backpack and getting out. 
there were kinda like cubbies for our bags by the windows, so Kyle grabs his sheet, packs it up, then straight eats it out the window point what follows, is the teacher yelling what are you doing, and Kyle screaming out I'm getting out, followed by him faking dolphin diving out the faking window. It was surreal point Kyle was suspended, came back a few weeks later, did some more sheet, suspended again, came back, was finally expelled. The dude is seemingly doing okay last time I facebook stalked him. Works at a chillers now aha. Edit an ezo I just woke up and this blew up, so I'm compelled to write more about the adventures of Kyle. Thusly the chronicles of Kyle the kid ate raw cup ramen hole. No I don't think I explained it properly. He ate the entire cup ramen hole. The styrofoam cup, the paper top, the dried noodles, everything. Would sprinkle the packet stuff for seasoning but everything else he consumed, dry as dirt. He also bit into oranges and bananas, like they were apples. Peel and skin and all. It was fascinating watching this man deconstruct an entire grapefruit point he once brought a bird to school. Not like a parakeet or anything, like a straight up grackle that are everywhere. He kept it in a show box in his beat up backpack, and would ask people hey wanna see Tweety? and pull out this faking box with covered in leaves, seeds and bird sheet with a faking bird in the middle. He was eventually caught by a teacher, and told to let it out, and he let it go in the courtyard, but the bird never flew off. It was probably injured or something. This dude was into Parker, but awkwardly so. We lived in a suburban area surrounded by lots and lots of country. He'd still manage to climb whatever he could though, like he'd be seen on random people's roofs, would try to jump over people's, slowly, moving cars in the parking lot, and would climb up trees, and like jump down, to surprise people from out of faking nowhere aha. He also of course climbed the school tower, and when the admin unlocked the base to climb the four flights up to get him, he had already scaled the outside water pipe down again. Kyle was weird, but he wasn't a bully. One time we had this race thing explode when a kid who was kinda bullied explode up at some black guys calling them n words and monkeys and etc. Like straight racial epithets to everyone, regardless of who they were, right in the middle of the cafeteria. It was about to be a dog pile when suddenly Kyle straight up faking splashing water at this dude, while yelling holy water. Holy water. God and boy you need Jesus. It was so faking insane, that it hesitated everyone long enough for the admin to break everything up, and separate the racist kid. Kyle essentially saved the bullied racist kid from getting beat down, by causing a bigger scene point goddammit Kyle. You are a faking L-E-G-E-N-D equals equals disclaimer equals equals T-H-I-S story is a work of fiction. Thanks for the silver and the gold, I know you all want a real world anti-hero. Or like a stupid hero? I dunno was fun. The only thing that was real was there was some guy who stopped a racist kid from being being beaten up by throwing holy water from a water bottle at him. That story was actually true. Oh and someone did jump out of a window because he was told to get out. I did not witness it. See y'all. I have three stories of rebellion that I watched. Point story one is from 8th grade. On the spring equinox, we would do a sort of equinox day, where everyone would be dressed in half black and half white clothing, and we'd have sweets, and what not in our science classes. It was a lot of fun. But one guy took it to the next level. He was this big kid who was a sweetheart, we'll call Bob. He decided to wear a cow costume the whole day to school. We all thought it was great, and so did the teachers. The vice principal and principal, not so much because the cow costume has pink utters, what did they expect? They ordered him to take it off by next class. He didn't. Instead, everyone, teachers included, helped him stay in the costume. See, in each class was a door connecting directly to another classroom. So when the vice principal or principal was walking by to do inspection, the teacher in Bob's class would send him through the door to the other class, where he would hide till the vice principal or principal were gone, then go back through to his class. It was interesting to watch as neither was aware he was still in the costume the whole day long. Stories 2 and 3 take place senior year of high school. During the last week, the seniors would be up to all sorts of shenanigans and the teachers, for the most part, let them be. That is. Till during my senior year we got a new principal and vice principal who were both sticklers for the rules. One day of our final week all seniors brought dogs to school, if they had one. The two didn't like that, and would force people to take their dogs home. So again, P 
People took advantage of the doors between rooms to hide the dogs in. Still, some people got caught though, so a few people took it up a notch when they went home and brought other things back. Someone brought a rabbit, another a pair of guinea pigs, someone a pet mouse, a few lizards, and even a chicken, which jumped onto a teacher's head. It was pretty funny to watch point the next day. Story 3 was Neon Day, where all seniors wore neon to school and would bike around the town. One student managed to get big neon pink cartoon balloon benizers that they tied to their bike and tried to bring into the school. Vice principal confiscated all of them and put them in her office. So people blew up more, which got confiscated and put in her office. By the end of the day, the office was full of balloon dicks. And someone managed to free one and let it loose in the cafeteria, which was two stories. So the balloon got stuck on the ceiling for the rest of the day for everyone to see. It was amazingly funny. This doesn't exactly answer the question, but it's close enough to be worth sharing this story now. Also I'm on mobile so sorry for any format errors. When I was in year 6 of primary school, in the UK, age 10 over 11, we had what could only be described as a student strike slash riot across two year groups in response to our head teacher breaking his promise. The best part of all is that this happened on Red Nose Day. For those who don't know, Red Nose Day is a biannual charity event held in March, run by the charity organization Comic Relief. The idea was to get comedians and public figures to hold comedy events for charity and the wider public could participate by holding events with some sort of ridiculous theme. It's practically become a British institution. Anyway, on to the story point the backstory our beloved head teacher had moved on from his position at our school to a new job, don't know where to, and it was very upsetting for many students, particularly those in the older year groups, 5 6 who felt they were losing a father figure. He was a great head teacher, no doubt about it. After a few months of having an interim head, the position is then filled permanently by the new head teacher, who I will call Mr. Stone. Mr. Stone was unpopular from the moment he set foot in the school because he made immediate and unsettling changes to the school rules and to the school timetable. He was also particularly strict at times, and many kids complained about what they thought was unfair punishment or poor enforcement of the school rules etc. Regardless, he was unpopular with the entire student body. The inciting incident under his new timetable, assembly for the upper years was immediately before our 20 minute break time, year groups 3 and 4 had their assembly in the afternoon. On one particular day, there was obviously a lot of important news or announcements to cover because the assembly, led by Mr. Stone, ran into our 20 minute break time by 10 minutes. We lost half of our break. He could sense the ever increasing frustration from students sat in the assembly hall who started getting more fidgety. Some started calling out and one even tried to straight up leave the hall before he finished talking but was stopped by another teacher in the room. So, Mr. Stone apologized and promised in front of the entire cohort of years 5 and 6 that we would get an extra 10 minutes added to the end of break time tomorrow to make up for it point the tomorrow in question would be Red Nose Day. We had known of the activities and special events that would be held well ahead of this and something that had been already announced was that our normal break time would be extended by 10 minutes, so 30 minute break instead of 20. With this extra 10 minutes given to us to make up for the assembly running over, this would make our break time 40 minutes come red nose day. This was what had been promised to us by the head teacher himself, and every student took note of this promise point the build up of the special events and activities planned for the day. Perhaps the biggest and most obvious to see happening was that students were told to wear the most ridiculous outfit they could, and there would be individual competitions for who had the best slash most ridiculous in each class. Incidentally, I won in my class. I wore an inside out rhubarb colored t-shirt that was so big it nearly went down to my knees, inside out trousers, inside out multicolored socks on my feet and hands, a patchwork jester's hat with bells, and of course a red nose, that was the icon of the event. I looked amazing, and it's fair to say, that the entire school looked brilliant point we get, let out for our break time, and all goes well until half an hour later the trigger just to add to the scene here, my school had two playgrounds, one for years 3 and 4, and another for 5 and 6. They were connected by an outside staircase, 
since our school was on a hill, and while you couldn't see the other playground, if you were standing in one, you could certainly hear the children and the school bell being rung, and I mean a really loud handheld bell. After our 30 minutes of break, we heard the bell going in the other playground. Normally this would prompt reactions of oh, they're about to ring it here too, let's start heading towards the doors, but today, since we knew we would get another 10 minutes still, we didn't pay any notice of it and continued playing, until they started ringing a bell in our playground too. A few students were very confused at first, and that confusion spread across the playground. We all stopped, but none of us made movements to head inside. The teachers continued to ring the bell and shouted instructions to go inside for everyone to hear. We collectively refused point most of us just stayed standing where we were, but those who happened to be closest to the door were trying to explain to the teachers ringing the bells that we had an extended break, as per Mr. Stone's promise. Apparently, the teachers were replying back saying that Mr. Stone had instructed them to ring the bell at this time anyway. He broke his promise point the staff room was on the second floor of the building, and in the corridor directly outside the staff room was a fire escape that led to a metal staircase that ran down the side of the building into our playground. Mr. Stone, after witnessing the confusion from the staff room, stood at the top of the fire escape stairs and addressed us all saying break time is over, head back to class. We were not pleased. Two year groups worth of students, about 150 of us in total, started chanting in unison we want our break. We want our break. All of us draped in oversized t-shirts and capes with ludicrous hats and shoes and face paint and whatever else, chanted like we were fighting for our freedom. The teachers in the playground were dumbfounded. But Mr. Stone was furious. He yelled as loud as his vocal cords allowed him to for us to get inside, but none of us obeyed. And his voice was only just audible above the clamor of high-pitched 10 and 11 year olds in the end. We effectively wasting our extra 10 minutes anyway. Because we spent them chanting like a politically oppressed people instead of playing as children would. We all went back inside. And the riot was all anyone could speak about for the rest of the day. Point the aftermath Mr. Stone would remain entirely unpopular for the remainder of his time at the school. And within a year he had either resigned or was fired. I had moved on to secondary school by that point, so I don't know. Either way, the head teacher of the infant slash sister school took over duties, and the events of the Red Nose Day riot went down in school history, or at least they did in my mind. I tell friends about this occasionally, and they all say the same thing, wow, that Mr. Stone was a dick, if you've made it this far, thanks for reading. I expect this story will get buried, but I felt it needed to be told regardless edit. Typus. So, some background. For the past year, I've struggled with depression and overcoming it. A way to get over it last year was through show choir. I was a junior last year, and, having dealt with attempted suicide and therapy, I wasn't thinking about my future and taking things minute by minute to see how I was. When school started back up, changes occurred in the choir. The director was replaced, the booster moms became the leaders, etc. I gave first semester a try to see if I would still enjoy it, like I had previously. Over time, I became more unhappy with the class and the team as a whole. I should also make a note that show choir is a huge time and money commitment, so it's time and money that I will never get back point now today, I made my mom aware of the issues recently and expressed that, after first semester, and testing the waters, I wished to resign from the course, which, being the beginning of a new semester, doesn't seem like too much to ask. When I brought it to the school's attention, they told me they can't do it, because of policy and, that I made the commitment last spring, and shouldn't have signed up for it, if it didn't make me happy. I explained that, with the many changes occurring, I did not wish, for my own happiness and mental health, to stay in the class. This is when my mom got involved. She, as any concerned parent would do, contacted my guidance counselor, who informed her that, after discussing it with the principal, could not change my schedule due to it being an all-year class. My mom said thank you for her time, and that she will be in contact with the principal. She called the principal and discussed her concerns for my mental health civilly. After telling her that I shouldn't be in the class, the principal reiterated the policy previously mentioned. Afterwards, my mom explained 
that the school's policies are stupid and that they almost caused me to commit suicide last year. After a bit of back and forth about what is happening in choir that was making me feel this way, the principal said that she would get to the bottom of everything in choir, but until I do, your son is to remain in the choir class. My mom retorted with, and I'm telling you that he will not be in the class and won't be in the class. The principal was dumbstruck and had no words the next day. My mom told me that if I wanted, she wouldn't take me into first hour, so I didn't have to go to choir class. I quickly agreed and have been growing happier since doing so point over the weekend. They had another phone call and she refused to budge on the policy. So my mom asked, so then what's the next step from here? The principal replied with, the next step would be to get the teacher, you, me, and your son into a conference and attempt to root out the problems from there. My mom talked to her a bit about how it wouldn't be right to talk to the teacher about all the things he is doing wrong. So my mom said, I'll just bring it to the superintendent and make him aware of the situation. The principal proceeded to scream at my mom that, no, the next step would be to have a conference. Obviously trying to keep my mom from contacting her boss. My mom, not wanting to tell the teacher to his face that he isn't teaching right, refused and hung up point she then called the superintendent this morning and left him a voicemail. Still awaiting a reply. I will keep you all posted point edit one. Thank you for the gold, whoever you are. An update came about. The superintendent called my mom back yesterday and let her know that the principal is correct about the policy, but he understands his concerns about my mental health. He said that the next step for my mom is to get a doctor's note from my psychiatrist that forbids me from being in the choir class. That will force the principal to reconsider the class change, and if she insists on the policy, then the superintendent will be brought into a face-to-face -face with me, my mom, the principal, and I about the situation and he can make a decision from there. Here's hoping. Can't have a horse on property? NP. Remove the principal's entire office and spread it around the school while leaving a horse locked inside the room with food. If only Bob Saget was there to see the aftermath of that office point edit. Here's the actual story behind it all. My mom's class brought a horse and left the horse in the school room free while removing every single school room's desks and chairs and putting everything into the hallways. In the principal's office, they left a bunch of birds that chat on everything. True story. Also, someone apparently tossed a desk out of one of the windows. I don't know what happened as a result of all of that, I can't remember. This was their senior prank. I suggested the horse and someone in my class decided to bring the horse the next day. His parents own a farm. Once he rode the horse to the school, the principal drove into the parking lot and saw the horse and told him to take it back. He was given detention. Instead they tidied up at school and called the parents. I don't know what happened with the phone call. After school, he said he was gonna take it home. He didn't point they broke into the school and removed the principal's office, spreading it around the school I'm different always, and left the horse locked inside the office. The horse ate some and some hay, and ultimately, crapped all over the place. They also broke the vending machines, and stole the content. Finally, they wrote some obscene stuff in the gym using a bunch of ketchup they stole from the cafeteria. The next day, the individual who brought the horse to school was suspended and didn't graduate with us. He didn't rat out the others who graduated fine. He dropped out of school and got his jed. He now runs his parents' farm and is very successful. His farm is now twice or three times the size it was originally. The others didn't get in trouble. Our school didn't have cameras in those areas. This was a very small school in a uber small town where more cows exist than people. In the school rules, official by the way, you are not allowed to bring any animals onto the property now. I graduated in 2008. TLDR the principal said that horses are not allowed on school property and gave detention. Principal done faked up. In my high school, only international baccalaureate students were allowed to go to school without a uniform, but still we had a bunch of rules that we had to stick to, such as skirts cannot be too short, no sandals allowed, no pajamas, and stuff like that. Point our home or room teacher for the last year of class was a grumpy math teacher, but when you got to know him well, he was an incredible person with a really witty sense of humor. 
That's when an idea popped in my mind. Exactly what qualifies as pajamas I asked him one day. He said that, if it was clothing, that I had used to sleep in that night, it was considered pajamas I asked a friend of mine, if she wanted to go in pajamas, to school the next day, just to mess with our teacher, and she agreed. So, next day arrives, I get to school wearing pajamas, and my friend chickened out, so it was only me breaking the rules. When our teacher gets to the classroom, and sees me wearing pajamas, he almost exploded. He was red with anger, and told me that what I was wearing is not allowed, and I should either go back home and change, 30 plus minute commute, or go to the supermarket and buy a pair of pants, since he didn't realize that my shirt was also a pajama shirt. I told him that I had not slept in those clothes that night, so it should not count as pajamas, as per his definition. He then said that this was not something I would wear to go out or walk around in the streets, and as such he considered it pajamas as well. I replied by saying that I'm willing to walk in the streets with these pants on. After some complaining, I got away with no repercussions sometime after that, my friend and I decided to go out and walk around the city in pajamas and take pictures of each other to send to our teacher as a joke. He was not mad this time, only laughed point in the end there were no hard feelings. The teacher got his petty revenge by changing the language of my Bluetooth headphones to Korean one time I left them at school and texted him to ask him to store them somewhere safe. I organized and followed through with a strike in the 7th grade point we, the entire class, were acting like normal 7th graders, as in gigantic jackasses, when our teacher decided to let the class know that just the girls would be going out for recess the rest of the week. Now, if they were behaving I guess I would have taken the lunch detention in stride, however they were being just as awful and this unequal application of the rules was not going to stand. So during lunch, I gathered all of the boys in my class and told them to sit on top of their desks and not to say anything. During the detention 8 to 10 out of the 16 boys did exactly as asked. When class started again and we were asked to take our seats, we were completely silent and none of us moved point the teacher walked up to each of us and started to berate and threaten us, don't make me call your parents, you're going to the dean who told you to do this. And so on point as she was yelling, I stood up from my desk and loudly proclaimed that we were on strike and that she could address any issues with me. After threatening me to no effect, she wasn't going to be able to fail the one kid in her class that got into accelerated classes. I stated that her behavior was unreasonable and that the punishment that she put forth was unacceptable. She stormed out of the class in tears. The principal was the next person through the door with the dean, and they both asked me to come with them. I politely declined, and told them that they can have whatever conversation they deem necessary in the presence of my classmates. After threatening me with a call to my parents, which didn't work, I was pretty sure that they would take my side, which they did. They both sat and asked why we were behaving this way. Point. When they were told about the issue, the dean had to stifle a laugh, and they left the room. After about 5 minutes the teacher returned, and while glaring at me, let us all know that the previously announced punishment would be rescinded, provided that the strike ended, and that there were no subsequent incidents. We agreed, with the stipulation, that she would attempt to determine who was really misbehaving, and punish them instead of blanket punishing the entire class the day after. I received the same punishment I got out of the day prior because I got caught making out with a girl during recess TLDR, led a successful strike in the 7th grade, and made a teacher cry. Then got the same punishment that I was supposed to get because I was making out with a girl during school. For my previous to last year, I don't know the term, of high school, we were not allowed to go to school without a uniform, only the students in their last year of high school could. Nevertheless, there were some parts of the school's uniform that I particularly disliked, such as the sweater and the socks. So I decided that I would wear my own sweater and socks to school every day. For some reason, my teachers did not care about me wearing a different sweater. So I kept doing it for the rest of the year it was a completely different story for my socks. One day, my math teacher 
who was my homeroom teacher the next year, and was also an incredible person with a very witty sense of humor, noticed that I was not wearing the correct socks, I was wearing watermelon socks, and you could only notice them if I pulled up my pants a bit, or if I stretched my legs. He then informed my homeroom teacher of what was happening, and she told him that I usually go to school with weird flashy socks as a joke, so she does not mind. Well, he did mind, so he proposed my teacher a game. They would actively try to spot me using weird socks and report me for every time I was not wearing the appropriate ones. Whoever managed to report me the most times in a month won. This did not go well for me, because after 4 or 5 uniform reports, there was a sanction point I had to switch to normal socks for that month, and that was not something I liked, so I decided that for the end of the month of the competition, I would organize my own competition. Everybody in class would go the last day of the month wearing their wackiest, weirdest, or flashiest socks, and whoever had the best ones, won. We all had to chip in for the grand prize point the day rolls in. We all go to school wearing super weird socks and all of our teachers noticed right away. They liked it so much that they decided that they no longer cared if I went to school wearing my weird socks. So I was able to do so for the rest of the year. When I was a junior in HS I was taking a senior level English class. The teacher was one of the uppity know it all as holes, but his class was alright. My school still accepted excused absences for some dumb activity days which in this case included, take your child to work day. Naturally my parents worked from a home office, so I took the day to relax at home, knowing I could have them sign off and be back at school the next day with a note and an excused absence point well. When I got back to school I was called to the dean's office, English teacher had reported me for skipping class. I argued with the dean, showed her the note, had my mother call in to confirm, and was still given in school suspension for two days for cutting class. Needless to say, I was furious. After my eyes I returned to class with some smartest comment from the teacher about how he hoped I learned my lesson. Sure point fast forward to the later half of the school year. This teacher taught only senior level English, which aside from me, meant every one of his students ended class about two to three months before I did. As we were approaching the senior walkout English teacher approached me and told me I did not have to come to class after the seniors left, as he would not have any material for me. It was incredibly satisfying to tell him I would be in class every day for those last three months with him, and even more gratifying to watch his face every day when I walked in to the only class he had to show up for every day. This was the PSD resistance of my rebellious high school career. They put school uniforms in during my senior year. The rule on jackets was as follows. Solid color with no visible writing or brand labels. Black, brown, gray, white, yellow, blue, pink only. Now from this description, you'd think a black leather jacket would be fine. But the principal suspended me for a day for wearing a leather jacket to school one day. It was nothing ostentatious. Just a normal black leather jacket. I'd never been suspended. So I went and talked to the superintendent because he lived up the road from me. I'd worked for his family in chicken houses for 3 or 4 years and he'd always been pretty dismissive of such things. So when he told me that he'd look into it and get back with me, I expected nothing. Point a week later, I was called to the office and the superintendent was sitting there with the principal. She very begrudgingly told me that I could wear my leather jacket as long as it met the criteria outlined in the handbook for uniform code and that it would not be so the next year. They sent out a revised dress code saying that leather jackets would not be allowed after that school year. This led to awareness that they were allowed and a lot more were floating around, which was awesome. Point finally, two of the goth guys went out and bought hot pink leather jackets. They were like, this jacket but 100% hot pink. They were all called to the office but nothing could really be done. I was faking excited to see a yellow leather jacket and one or two more pink ones before the end of the year. Oh, I have a couple of great stories of mine. Neither of them are rebelling against rules, but rather sheety teachers I had this one teacher who was terrible to me. She wouldn't let me drink water in class, even though water was allowed in class. I walked around with a water bottle, and she wouldn't let me even touch it. This on its own, even though not cool, I would have tolerated. The problem was the double standard. 
she'd let pretty much all the girls she liked in class drink whatever they wanted. This wasn't just limited to water, but whatever. The worst was this girl named Vanessa. She'd come every morning into class, late af, and she would walk in with a McMuffin, hash browns and orange juice. The thing was Vanessa would walk in with her combo and leave a McMuffin in her desk as a bribe. I would point this out to the teacher that when I was late I'd get sent to the office and when I drank water she wouldn't let me. Meanwhile Vanessa was bribing her while she scuffed her hash one combo in the back of the class faking hated Vanessa even though if I was in her shoes I'd leverage that cheat too. Anyway, one day I had enough. I conspired with my three of my friends in class. We each brought in a different thing. I brought in solo cups. When Vanessa walked into class, late, of course, the next day, she put the McMuffin in the teacher's desk and proceeded to start scarfing hers down. We waited patently until the teacher assigned us some bullshit thing to do so she could eat her McMuffin. She took the first bite and that was the signal. It was on. My friends and I moved our desks together in a circle and we each took out our thing. I took out a solo cup, my next friend put frosted flakes in it, my next friend poured milk in it, and my last friend put a spoon in it. We assembly lined the fuck out of five of these cereal and milk cups, we each took our own, and then I stood and placed one in her desk and said your bribe point I was surprised that she didn't say anything and let us finish our cereal. She didn't eat hers, but she said nothing. We ate our cereal, class ended and we left. Two periods later, I took a bathroom break and OMW to the bathroom I ran into my parents. I asked them what are you two doing here? To which they replied what the fuck do you think as whole? The teacher had called them and wanted to kick me out of her class permanently. My parents were really cool and took my side. They said they didn't approve of the serial thing but agreed the teacher held a double standard. The school didn't suspend me, and from then on, I was able to drink my water, and Vanessa's McMuffins were no more. Sorry Vanessa, but justice won. I have two hilarious stories from my best friend in high school. We were presenting a test, he asked for the answers, so I write them up in a paper and slowly pass it backwards. He was sitting behind me. Three minutes later the teacher sitting across the room caught him and told him to bring the paper so that he can check whose writing was it and punish both of us. My friend with a disappointing face starts walking towards the teacher and halfway there he stop and before anyone could understand what happened he shoves the paper in his mouth and start chewing. The teacher started laughing and all was forgiven point we were in a history class and the teacher was getting really angry because he keeps coughing kids looking at the phones during class. He got so angry that he said, if I caught anyone else looking at his phone he will have it back at the end of the year. Noon took out the phones anymore, but 30 minutes later he realized that my friend was looking down the way you look when you are using your phone. A little smile draws on our teacher face. He starts walking like the hero after victory battle towards my friend. My friend quickly realizes this and hides hands with his phone inside of the desk. The teacher arrived and asked for the phone. He begs not to do this, that he cannot lose the phone. The teacher replies that he need to set the example for the rest of the classroom. After several back and forth my friend gave up and slowly took his hand from his desk. The teacher panic when my friend show him a phone drawn in a piece of cotton. All the classroom started to laugh, and so did the teacher. Nothing happened to him again. Three element of necessary background information about my old high school point as a senior. You could pay to park in the senior parking lot that was right across the street from the school. It was competitive with not even every senior getting a spot. If you didn't get a spot, then you had to take the bus as there was no other nearby parking point seniors graduated on a Sunday about two weeks before the rest of the school year ended and stopped coming full time three, four weeks early, I forgot. Traditionally, after graduation juniors with cars would park in the senior lot point it was traditional for seniors to prank the rest of the school. The year ahead of mine put some store bought fish somewhere in the HVAC system. The first week was at a temp that the HVAC was running neither heat nor ack, so the fish just sat there and rotted. Then it got hot and the HVAC kicked on and sent that rotten fish smell through the whole school. Sometime the week before graduation they realized it was a senior prank and tried to track down who did it. The offenders did not remember where they put it and had not drawn a map or anything. 
The Friday before graduation they had to close early because it was too disgusting. Threats were made and the fish was eventually found point fall out, the school forbade senior pranks and my year was the first year not allowed to do one, on threat of not graduating. We were good little students and listened. Graduation came, we partied and stayed up all night. At some very late drunk hour I had the idea of going to school the next morning to heckle the students. This filtered through the party and eventually morphed into something along the lines of we own our spots, and if they won't let us prank, then we'll not let them park. The next morning, very early, because none of us went to sleep. Somewhere between 1 and 200 of us, 1 slash 2 of the class, showed up at the senior parking lot to keep drinking and make signs. None of us actually parked in the lot. Instead, we took up every parking spot within a mile of the school. As juniors started to drive in, we blocked the parking lot entrance in a line three or four people deep all holding signs that read no prank no parking. The first few just went elsewhere, but they quickly learned we took every parking spot within a mile of the school for our cars. This caused a huge traffic jam on one of the two main roads in town as juniors were trying to get into the lot, we weren't letting them, and the buses couldn't get to the school point the police were called, and they told us we couldn't block the lot entrance, because it was on the street. Their presence got everyone to throw out, or hide any alcohol. We let a few juniors in, harassing them with signs, and the police left. As soon as the police were gone, we occupied every parking spot in the lot point now the juniors could get into the lot, but they couldn't actually park anywhere. Police were called back, but this time they agreed with us that we had paid for the right to use the parking lot, and unless the school could prove that the use ended with our graduation, it was our right to use the spots however we wanted. They also sort of helped us block the lot by parking their car halfway across the entrance and they started directing traffic because the giant traffic jam we'd caused on one of the main roads in town had filtered through the entire morning commute point first period basically didn't happen that day as the last bus arrived only a few minutes before it ended. Juniors, in particular, missed much of second period too because there were no parking spots anywhere nearby. The police directed them to the old, abandoned, school lot, which was almost two miles away. The few juniors who got into the senior lot parked in random places because we were occupying the parking spots. This made that lot an insane mess as well, since they parked in the driving lanes my sister's class did it again the next year, and it became a new tradition that was going strong at least seven years later when a family friend's kid graduated. She got a kick out of learning I was one of the people who had the initial idea and was part of that initial class. I went to a school that has a compulsory cross country day where basically you have to walk slash jog slash run laps around the block the entire day. It's absolute bullshit and serves no goddamn point except to humiliate anyone with asthma point my parents agreed with me and gave me a note to say I was excused from cross country for medical reasons. My best friend accidentally broke her leg a couple of days before cross country, so we were both excused from running and planned to have a good day watching all the other poor saps run laps. Except the teachers are absolute as holes and decided that if we wouldn't participate in cross country, we were to do all the nastiest jobs around the school, scrubbing toilets, cleaning the furnace etc. Yes, they expected a girl with a broken leg to limp around the block all day, or else have to scrub someone else's sheet out of a toilet. I don't know if they didn't believe we were actually injured, or if they were just complete as holes, but after complaining to the vice principal and getting nowhere, we decided enough was enough. We knew that teachers were patrolling the block to catch any truants, so we went to the library and hid in there the rest of the day. It was unstaffed due to cross country, so we gathered all the pillows into a pile, and if anyone came in, we hid under the pillows. It worked. At the end of the day we showed up, and were immediately marched to the principal's office for being truant. Except we didn't leave the school grounds, and we didn't technically skip any classes, so in the end they had to let it drop point TLDR fact cross country, we hid in a pillow fort all day, got away with it cause technically we weren't skipping classes. When I was in 9th grade, about 15 years old where I live, we weren't allowed to wear hats or have our hoods up in the cafeteria. 
most people followed the rules, and except for when the teachers on duty had to remind someone who forgot, we barely gave it any thought point the only time we really challenged it was when a friend of mine suddenly wore a hat all day and refused to take it off. Turns out he had dyed his hair blue the day before and was now embarrassed. That was all fine and dandy until our group of friends went to have lunch and he, having left it on, was approached by a lunch lady who told him to take it off. He said no. She told him again. He shrunk in on himself, but still said no, this time while avoiding eye contact. That was about when we realized that it was really important to him that his hair wasn't seen. We had been encouraging him all day, but it was still too much for him. Point I don't remember exactly how it happened, but as a group we started trying to reason with the lunch lady, telling her why he wanted to keep it on, asking why it was so important that we didn't wear hats, and pointing out how we never broke the rules normally. She wasn't having it, and she refused to give us a reason, so we buckled down. Even the ones of us who never wore hats or hoods put them on, and we just sat there until he could finish eating. They kept telling us to leave, but we stuck to our guns, and with time other classmates that weren't very close to him came up and asked what was going on. When we told them they joined in. Our support was growing. At one point even the cool teachers were threatening us with repercussions, reminding us that our finals were being graded and that our grades were in their hands. We were all fairly certain that they were bluffing and couldn't mess with our grades without getting fired, but secretly I was sheeting my pants eventually we were content and we left. Repercussions were minimal and the same teachers that had threatened us acted like nothing had happened next time we saw them point it was a very minor rebellion, but what it represented was very grand. Not just his friends, but a good chunk of our class stood up for this guy, despite what could happen, and stood by him when he was feeling vulnerable. Maybe it's silly, but I'm really proud to have been a part of that point edit, added in missing periods, and fixed some typos. This will get buried, but it was one of the more epic moments of my middle school career. In 8th grade, circa 2007, Ugg slippers were really in style. Like these. And for those who might remember, to be on trend you had to wear them with buckle miss me jeans with the sparkles on the butt and a Hollister or a Bercrombie shirt that just had the word printed across the front. That was the style haha point anyway, my school decided to ban all slippers for some reason during this time. They put pictures all over the halls with like 30 different little examples of slippers you couldn't wear to school. The difference with Uggs is they had hard sturdy soles, so they weren't exactly the same as regular house slippers, but they banged any type of shoe in the slipper style point some girls started to get their parents caught if they wore them to school, and then the school started putting monitors at the door to check your shoes as you walked in the building, and if you had slippers on you'd have to stop and go to the office and call home to have someone bring you another pair or wear something from lost and found or whatever well we all thought this was stupid so like 40 or 50 of us girls decided one day to wear our slippers to school together in protest. We didn't that morning we all walked in together and the monitor made every one of us stand in the hall and take our shoes off and wait while she got the principal. The principal and the assistant principal came out with a few teachers and a lot of girls started arguing with them, showing the soles of the shoes, and asking why we couldn't wear them, saying they were expensive, we got them for Christmas, etc. Finally the principal left all mad, and just sent us to class, but the next day all the signs were gone, and no monitors were at the door, and no one said a word to us again about our stupid Ugg slippers haha. <laughs> we all felt pretty bad eh? Two stories here point not me, but my dad. When he was in middle school, there was a ban on wearing shorts. Skirts, although, were still allowed. Fed up with this, a couple of boys at his school wore skirts to school and got in trouble. I don't remember if they lifted the ban. I'll have to ask my dad. I'll edit the post when I get the answer this next one is a long one point this happened at my school not long ago. Our middle school instated a new policy where students were only able to go to the bathroom 10 times per month. Me, my friend James, and my friend Y all decided we weren't going to just let that happen. What planned a protest? James made a website and a change.org petition. I made and printed out flyers to bring to school. I then posted a picture of the flyer with a caption which said to share this on my Snapchat story. Then I told James and Wyatt to do it as well. 
Then, I started getting notifications. I was getting tons of views on my story and literally every single person that viewed it screenshotted it and posted it on their story, which then made her chain mail for a good cause. Of course the three of us start flipping out. Then we check the change.org petition 50 signatures already. By the end of the night it was at 150 plus signatures. We went to sleep excited, and the next day we woke up to see it at 250 signatures. Everyone was texting me, telling me not to bussy out and to bring the flyers to school. There was a group chat of 30 plus people that all were supporting it. That was our 15 minutes of fame. I got to school and started handing out flyers to everyone. People were taping them to walls, ceilings, exit signs. People were chanting in the hallways. It was insane. Not even halfway through first period, I get called to the office. On the way there I see James and Wyatt walking out of the office. I look at them, and they say yeah, it's about the thing. I go into the office and the principal gives me a stern talking to a- Of course someone snitched. I didn't care. I stood my ground. I nodded to everything they said and then left. Everyone was staring at me in the hallways walking back. There was a flyer taped to the ceiling and a teacher was trying to get it down. Yada 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 the day ends, I go home and talk to my dad about it. We schedule an appointment with them and talk to them about the situation. We agree to change the policy. We change it and the 10 bathroom passes per month policy is gone. Celebration ensues. We get praised for a week and everything goes back to normal. Also, the three of us plus a bunch of students that want to help the school staff understand what the student body wants were put into a committee that makes sure the kids are happy at the school. Overall, things are looking up. TLDR. School created an unfair policy. Me and a few friends started a protest and got the policy changed. Not sure about it being the best, but in elementary school, yes I said elementary, my 4th grade class was doing this tobacco class to prevent kids from smoking when they were old enough to do so, backfired tremendously, one of my really good friends and another girl ended up going to the bathroom because they didn't feel good supposedly. I asked if I could go next and the teacher told me to go ahead and hey the other girls before the no smoking instructor got there. Which would be any second. Try to keep in mind that we were in 4th grade. I was only 8 years old about to turn 9 though laugh out loud my friend was a few months younger. Anyway, as I got to the bathroom, the actual instructor was heading in the bathroom ahead of me. I found it hilarious really, but there was irony in it, since technically they got in trouble by the person that had been teaching us why we shouldn't smoke for 3 days in a row. Needless to say, these geniuses were in the bathroom of an elementary school smoking cigarettes in a bathroom stall. Our bathroom's main door, like the one to the hallway, was always propped open, including this day. I could literally see smoke coming out the door before even getting there. I'm guessing that's why the smoking instructor was headed that way to laugh out loud so. I guess 8 year old children smoking cigarettes in the bathroom at school is one way to rebel against the no smoking class they were already in 3 days out of 5. It's really not that funny, it's pretty awful to be honest. Story time I went to an all girls high school with a very strict uniform, except in our final year students were allowed to wear mufti, with a few stipulations, the usual no bra straps, no tiny skirts and such. We were all looking forward to it. Except, we'd just gotten the new principal the year before, and she was cracking down. Hard. No ripped jeans, no more on uniform jackets, ours were sheets so the old principal let us wear black ones on really cold days, she took away the year 13th lounge, from comfy couches to study desks, sent to the office for being 2 seconds after the second bell, big school, some of us were running uphill to get to classes, and worst of all. She decided my year would be the last allowed to wear mufti point no one like this, but what can we do? Well, I had a look at the student handbook, being an alternative student, punk, I was looking forward to more self-expression, but still wanted to stick to the rules. Well, there was no rule on hair, aside from one tiny must be a natural color. Cool, I can work with that. Also, no rule on jewelry aside from dangly earrings, my ears aren't pierced so meh, got a mohawk. 
shaved down to the skin, 7 inches tall, dyed it white, natural color, started wearing spikes and collars, leather jacket, patch jane jacket, no rips, showed up on the first day of my last year, they were not pleased, told me to shave my mohawk or leave for starters. I'd already spoken to a lawyer, the rules were written, legally binding, unable to change, as soon as the books had been handed out, and I was within the rules. There was a fight, I brought my lawyer and my dad in with me the second day, so the school could explain to them. Their excuse was that Mufti was a chance to learn to dress professionally that wasn't written down, nor did they specify what profession we should be dressing for I won. The relaxed the dress code for the year, because any time a student was pulled up they'd just bring up my style choices and boom, they were suddenly, in comparison, perfectly professional point TLDR, sheety uniform, new strict principle, final year of mufti, got a mohawk, and dressed punk in my final year, the all girls school couldn't do sheet cause they hadn't anticipated it, and I had a lawyer. Students loved me cause they could get away with a lot more using me as a scapegoat point edit. The next year they added a new rule no extreme hairstyles to the rules book. It remains my legacy. Not really a rebelling against school rules thing, but I have a story point I moved to a different state the summer of 11th grade and the new school I went to had a really strict dress code because of teachers who couldn't control themselves around students. The school I had transferred from also had a dress code, but they wouldn't force it, unless it was really bad, that is wearing tank tops and shorts were okay, since it got pretty hot, but you had to change if your but slash boobs were hanging out, or if there were any bad loggers. First day of school rolls around, and since it was hot ASF, I wore a pair of shorts, and got some not, so nice side glances from teachers throughout. The day until I finally went home with a warning and a copy of the student handbook from a VP. I told my parents and my grandpa was pissed. He took my copy of the student handbook and started highlighting all the parts of the dress code I could get away with, like length of your shorts has to be past your fingertips, etc. Point a couple days pass, and school is starting to get into actual school, the hear how things are gonna go phase just ending and the regular, but random dress code checks starting to take place. It was a good thing my grandpa has went through and highlighted everything important because I got called up to the front of the class for having ripped jeans. I took my handbook with me and showed them the rule in it saying ripped jeans are fine as long as it's below mid thigh. They let me sit back down because there wasn't anything they could tell me. I was following the rules a couple kids who were repeat offenders also ended up getting copies of the student handbook and would pull it out every dress code check or whenever they felt like they could use something in it to get away with something. So in about a month or two, they stopped giving them out in the office freely. You had to ask for one now and they stopped the checks because there'd always be students who'd argue with the VPs about whether or not they're good with or without the handbook. So I'm the one who did this and it's not really as rebellious as it is passive aggressive. I went to a private high school and we had uniforms. One of the pieces of our uniform was a school issued name tag. Sometimes there would be uniform checks where the first period teacher had to check and make sure our uniform was on correct and complete like the correct socks, that if you wore a headband it was within the regulations, that kind of thing. So there was a uniform check and I forgot my name tag, so I was given a demerit. This was not too bad on its own, but if I got three or four, I forget which, I would get detention. I got pretty angry at this, since it was December, everyone knew my name by now, and all I did was forget a little piece of plastic displaying my name. Plus, it's not like I was just given the demerit, the teacher was sure to loudly scold me about it in class. So being the passive aggressive little crap I was, I went home and read the handbook, and it said that we had to wear our name tag every day, on the left side of our shirt slash sweater slash blazer, above the school emblem. It didn't say anything about the name tag having to be right side up. So, for the next few months I wore my name tag every day, just upside down. I got scolded a couple times, but I was very happy to point out that technically I was not breaking any school rules. I know it's not a harrow ring tail or anything but hey, I got some other people to join me in my little rebellion. 
Plus, it was a strict private school with lots of rules, and it was very easy to get detention. So there wasn't very much we could do in the realm of rebelling. My high school tried to be really cool by organizing loads of school-wide activities. Aside from usual student plays for like Nationwide Teachers Day and such there were also various competitions on various fields where each class would participate and be judged depending on type of competitions either against everyone else or within its level. These things would range from school Eurovision, Pi Day competition to school sports festivals. The catch. All of those were mandatory to participate. Even if you didn't represent your class you had to be there. For most of those, that included people from oldest classes, who had their maturity exams in sight, and, frankly, weren't too thrilled about having to do these instead of learning, but wouldn't be let go even when they asked point so, that's the context. Now onto the story point there were two classes of the same type, enhanced biochemistry, from that we want to learn for finals category. At the start of the year there was a sports competition, essentially relay race. It was a two-parter. First five representatives of each of classes would race in swimming pool. Then for the second part ten others would run a loop around school and dorms in first one of aforementioned classes vast majority decided they ain't gonna be racin' in anything. Class did put out representation, but was disqualified due to too many slots being filled by the same, the only willing, people. Unfair, if you ask me point the other one is where it gets good. Swimming pool race went as normal. The running on the other hand. I kid you not, they organized, got their classmates to wait behind the school with rollerblades at the side of the track, and, when the person currently holding the baton got to that spot, they would stop, put those rollerblades on and gracefully continue riding instead of running. Even some people who have never rode those before were down to do it, just to spite the school board. And one guy not only did that, he also came wearing blue unicorn on Ishii, generally speaking. Principal and pet teachers weren't thrilled, they made a point to call them out for it, both classes, even the first one. During official summary of the event, tell everyone it was really shitty behavior, that they ruined it for everyone else and that, if we don't like it so much, then they'll stop organizing those point for me personally. It was the best one of those sports events but hell, what do I know? During my junior year of high school, the school decided to change how library entries worked. Before, you signed in on a sheet when you entered the library and crossed off your name on that list when you left. Now, if you didn't get to the library within the first 5 minutes of any given class period, you would be turned away at the door and told no didn't matter how many people were in the library, didn't matter if you had a reason to be there, printing out an assignment, research for a project, etc. If you didn't get there within the first 5 minutes, you were sheet out of luck. And it didn't matter what the reason for being late was. If your teacher held you for a few minutes after class, you were faked. If you were in the nurse's office prior, you were faked point as someone who spent every minute out of class, every open period, every study hall, every free moment I had, in the library, this did not sit well with me at all. I had a bit of a rebellious streak, and also an obstinate streak, when it came to rules I didn't agree with. I refused to obey the new rule as a matter of course. If I got there late, I would walk right past the person at the desk trying to turn me away, sit down at a computer, and get to work on whatever I had gone there to do, and ignore them completely. When a librarian would tell me I had gotten here too late and had to leave, I told them that they were interrupting my schoolwork and go right back to ignoring them. This went on for a few weeks before I got called down to the principal's office. He sat me down and demanded to know why I was breaking the rule. He said I was setting a bad example and that other students were copying my behavior. I just looked him straight in the eye, said I had no intention to comply with a rule that interfered with my schoolwork, and then asked if I could go back to class. He asked me again to obey the library rule and I refused. I got a week of detention that I didn't go to and kept right on doing it. Eventually they gave up and stopped enforcing the rule because people were not obeying it. Point this isn't the only time I've accidentally inspired an insurrection in my fellow students, but I'll post that story another time. A bit of a r slash malicious compliance thing here too. Story features me, but mainly my mom telling my principal to stick it. 
Sorry for formatting, I'm on mobile, I'm also lazy. TLDR, my mom comes up with creative way to circumvent principal punishing kids participating in Parkland Memorial Walkout I have always been something of an activist. I was in 8th grade when Parkland happened and took it upon myself to coordinate my school's part of the nationwide walkout. The administrators were not fans of the inevitable backquote chaos this would inspire and so issued warnings of detentions and suspensions for anyone who tried. I didn't care and kept spreading the word, applying the Area 51 logic of they can't stop all of us. I was pulled into the office for a lecture about a week before the thing itself. I don't think the principal necessarily wanted to give it, but it was the superintendent's decision. Meanwhile, my mom was less than pleased, as she has some sort of teaching degree and thought this whole thing would be much better handled as a learning experience about non-violent protest or something. The Sandy Hook kids would be the same age as my brother, so she's well aware what the reality of the situation is, she's aware of the fact those active shooter drills give me terrible feelings of dread, because they are never announced beforehand and always make me cry. She understands why we want this, why we need this, and yet the school's punishing us for voicing it. She's never been a fan of my school district's policies about this sort of thing, but she also didn't want that on my record. So she hatched a plan, but didn't tell me until the day of for fear that I would say something and get the whole thing shut down. The time came. I was called down to the office as I was being signed out. My science class was in uproar as they thought I had tricked them somehow. In hindsight, I get that assumption. I assured them this was part of the plan, that I would be back in 17 minutes. I grabbed my coat and hurried out the door with my mom and the administrators had that sort of well, that's clever, but we can't acknowledge it, or she'll try it again so don't smile damn it look. Me, mom, and the assistant principal, to make sure I didn't cause trouble, stood around for a bit, before being joined for a few more kids. TRI didn't hear this, but my mom told me after the fact that me leaving had given at least one of them the courage to do it too. We didn't draw a crowd, it was like 7, 8 kids tops, and then we went back in. The others were promptly escorted to the principal's office, and I was ushered back to class before I could lead another peasant revolt. And me being me, always seeking attention, rebellion, and followers, made the split-second decision to basically go. Yeah know what no I'm joining the other kids don't you dare make exceptions punish all of us or punish none. We were in the office for a few minutes before unceremoniously being told to go back to class. I was later told that the other kids' parents were contacted and they were made to write an essay or something. Word spread and I had a temporary popularity boost. Nothing came of it, as you all know, damn NRA, but I did my part and that's all anyone could do. No lying down, laying. English is my second language. During recess it was a full-time school, as in we were there 10 h slash day. It was also a model public school where some important people visited to learn about the techniques employed there and what we studied, etc. Points during recess, which we had 3 of, 20 meters in the morning, 1 h for lunch, 20 meters in the afternoon, students who were tired would usually lie down to take a short nap or eat more comfortably, whatever. The area where we had recess even had bean bag chairs, and it's not a huge logical leap from lounging on a bean bag chair to lying down on the floor with your head on the bean bag chair. Problem was that the principal thought that this made the school look bad when the important guys in suits visited and saw us lying down during their tours. So suddenly we started being ordered to stand up and even to only sit on chairs. So not even sitting down cross-legged on the floor was okay anymore. Point then one of the teachers introduced us to Twitter. It was 2009 or 2010. Big mistake. We all started following each other and ended up organizing. Tweets were flying about when, what, and where. Lunch time came, and, after eating, because who rebels on an empty stomach, if they have a choice? I went to our recess area and things looked normal, though there was a buzz of tension in the air. I saw a kid or two lie down, but they obeyed as soon as a monitor ordered them up. So I grabbed a book I'd been reading, walked to the centermost pillar in the room, propped my backpack on it and laid down, using the backpack as a pillow, and reading my little book. The monitor came up to me, kill a coup, get up, no, thanks, what, I, 
won't get up. I'm fine here. I'll get the principal, please. Do. People were watching, and a few students started lying down by my side. The monitor did go get the principal, and by the time she arrived, 30 or so students were lying down around me, and the number was increasing point she asked me and another student, who had managed to make another pocket of resistance lying down somewhere else with a group around him too, to go to her office. She said she understood why we were doing it, but she wouldn't change the rules. We argued that our comfort and well-being was more important than impressing visitors, but she didn't budge point however, the monitors never bothered us about it anymore. Either they didn't want the hassle, or the principal herself told them to relax the enforcement of that rule, probably to avoid the hassle too. Bonus, at college, I met a guy who studied at that school after I left. During his time, the rule was back in full effect. I wonder if they waited for us to graduate. In high school, my best friend got the nickname Pineapple Boy because he wore a shirt with a pineapple on it in pet. Come time to take yearbook photos, lots of people included props in their portraits. People on the volleyball team wanted a picture holding a volleyball, etc. Pineapple Boy brought a pineapple point after the portraits. The yearbook photographer took group photos of all the teams at the school. I was student council president at the time, and Pineapple Boy was VP. He asked if he could hold the pineapple in the group photo, and I agreed. He thought it would be funny to sneak it into every group photo, so, with consent of each team, we gave the pineapple to someone in the photo. Eventually, a teacher noticed, and became absolutely enraged, that we were ruining the yearbook by including the pineapple in so many photos. She threatened to have Pineapple Boy suspended, and took him to the principal's office. It caused a huge debate among teachers and students about who was in the wrong. It became a rule that the pineapple incident was not to be talked about or referenced anymore to avoid more drama, and Pineapple Boy was let off the hook point later that year when we were planning our senior prank. One of the kids in our class mentioned that his dad was high up in a business that received shipments from corporations and sent stock to grocery stores. He claimed he could get us as many pineapples as we wanted. We got $5 from every student in our grad class and ordered a sheet load of pineapples. Then on the last day of school, we asked a teacher to let us in early and we hid those things everywhere. There was not a nook nor a cranny in that school that wasn't home to a pineapple. The teacher who originally advocated for pineapple boy's suspension received a pineapple on her desk and made a passive aggressive thank you announcement over the PA system. Eventually people started finding more, and the staff realized the gravity of our protest point I'm not sure what happened after that, maybe they all had to stay and find the pineapples, maybe they missed some, and they rotted over the summer. I like to think that there is still a pineapple or two somewhere in that building. No one in my school is allowed to wear shorts to avoid backquote sexual assault and because it's too revealing. We were nearing the end of the school year, it was around May, so naturally as was super hot. So someone in our school decided to make a post on Instagram saying that everyone should show up to school tomorrow to protest about how people should be allowed to wear shorts, so they wrote to share this to as many people. Later on in the day, I scroll through Instagram and that's all I see. We named it the backquote short movement. So the next day, everybody shows up to school wearing shorts. I expected for them to get mad but nothing happened. Eventually I hear people booing at a kid and I realize that it's the only kid I've seen that day wearing pants. So the day continues as normal and everybody though the plan had worked. Until they decided to call us to a meeting point in that meeting they were talking to us about following rules and no shorts and blah 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 when that same kid wearing pants got up on stage and just dropped his pants. Underneath were his boxes that were I guess short enough to be shorts. I thought people were gonna start laughing and teasing him. But instead everybody started clapping and cheering him on. They started calling him back quote the no pants legend. That day we had a representative from the district and we had embarrassed our principal in front of him. The principal was so embarrassed that he wanted to make sure that this never happened again. So he lifted the ban against shorts. And to this day, because of that kid we are allowed to wear shorts, his legacy will remain forever. Beginning of senior year, I had a free period three days a week, 
and it would be my first class of the day on Tuesdays at something. Anyways, during my free period, I would go down to my Jeep Wrangler in the student parking lot and set up a hammock between my Jeep and a palm tree, and I would take a nap, eat some fruit from some nearby mango and papaya trees, do some last minute classwork, then take it down, and head to class. Sometimes I'd leave it up for some friends to use, and occasionally one of the security guards that was always rolling around on a golf cart who thought my idea was brilliant. Anyways, a week or so goes by, and we have our first class meeting in the auditorium, and as the dean is wrapping up, he throws in oh yeah, also, there's no need for people to be setting up hammocks in the student parking lot, if you need the extra sleep, go to bed earlier and everyone just laughed and looked in my direction. I was never a huge fan of my dean, but I decided to comply nonetheless, maliciously that is. So the next time I had a free period, I walked to the opposite side of campus from the student parking lot and set up a smaller hammock between a couple trees in the courtyard. I received a call on my cell phone not 15 minutes later, and it was my dean. Hi, Hawaiian hillbilly, this is dean, can you please come down to my office? Me, sure, Jim a couple minutes, and I'll head on over dean, yes. Take down your hammock and come to my office his first words were HH. Do you know what just pisses me off? In subordination after a hilarious scolding, I'm walking to my next class and my mother calls me, absolutely dying of laughter asking if I just got in trouble for setting up a hammock. Apparently she laughed in my dean's face as well when he called to tell her. After Columbine schools got really paranoid and my high school was no exception. There were the obligatory trench coat bands of course, ones that were over enforced despite this being northern Nevada, where dusters were not just a fashion statement, but a functional piece of clothing owned by many high schoolers. The administration would always puff up, insist rules were rules, then get beaten down by a combination of angry parents and reality. Such was life point one of these similar idiocy, in ruler making moments wound up affecting a friend of a friend. It's been so long I forget the specifics, but the short version is that he was pulled into the administration office because he supposedly did something threatening or terroristic or some such. Now this kid was one of the good kids, not 100% squeaky clean but maybe 1 to 2 detention that I remember, and a 3.7 ish GPA, and here's the administration, the vice principal himself even, accusing him of some horrendous thing, expecting him to buckle, confess that he did this thing to scare people, etc. He does not. Instead he demands he be allowed to call his parents. Administration stalls. He demands again. They either let him call, while supervising the call, or call themselves, I forget which. Either way his parents know he's being pressured without them present. So they call their lawyer to intervene. Their lawyer shows up to the school in short order also. Their lawyer was Judge Mills Lane point now legally speaking who the lawyer was, doesn't make that much difference, but practically it made a ton of difference. It's one thing to try and tell some student's lawyer that school rules trump the law regarding some disciplinary matter. It's another thing to tell that to the guy who stood toe to toe with a near biting Mike Tyson and literally called him on his bullshit. Administration let my friend of a friend go in a hurry. Technically not rebelling against a rule, but hypocrisy point I went to Catholic elementary school because my mum was raised Catholic and she went to that school and my grandparents had taught at the school, etc. Anyway, in the 8th grade year, the Catholics have a sacrament. Baptism is a sacrament for the lay people called confirmation and the point is at baptism you're brought into the church by your parents slash guardians but at confirmation you choose to become part of the church of your own free will now i had begun to question things in my eighth grade year and was thinking it now they're saying you shouldn't get confirmed if you aren't sure because it's a permanent choice so i thought why don't i not get confirmed and someday if god really speaks to me i'll do it spoiler alert god ain't said sheet so I go to my religion teacher, it was a class, and informed them of my decision. They were taken aback, because in all the time they'd been saying that confirmation is a choice, apparently no student had made my decision. She tried to talk me out of it. And even if you know absolutely nothing about kids, you know that if they make a decision after you gave them a choice, they are going to die with that decision. 
Over the next few weeks, I was pulled out of religion class every day to be handed off to a different teacher in the school to have that teacher try to convince me to get confirmed. Last two were the principal and finally the priest of the church that the school was connected to point I held my ground, didn't get confirmed. Now I generally dislike religion, at least organized religion, proudly consider myself an atheist and the rest of my family has since abandoned the religion. Buckle up boys and girls, it's story time point the year is 2008 and a swarm of teachers is forming around the third floor girls bathroom. There, on one of the stall doors, someone had graffiti for over 20 boom. Naturally, a word percolated down to the new superintendent, who, eager to show her leadership and bolster her authority, declared that a bomb threat had been made against the school on April 20th. Was it possible that the supposed threat was actually some sort of cryptic message with a less sinister meaning, as many students tried to tell her? Maybe, but better not risk it. Fast forward a few months. April 20th rolls around, and at 11am the intercom informs us that the whole school is being evacuated for no apparent reason. Classes grind to a halt, students flood the halls, teachers flummox about to grab unfinished tests from students, and the entire high school of around 1,400 teenagers are walked from the public high school over to the public middle school where they lounge about in the gym until their emergency contacts pick them up. What? Happened? The students ask. Nothing. The administration was on high alert and just got trigger happy with their order to parade over 1,000 students through the town square. But that's not the end of it, not by a long shot. It is declared that for the next week every student entering the high school will have their bags searched, and this is no empty threat point the next day the main entrances of the high school were oped off, and at opening bell every student was funneled into the gymnasium, where their teachers had been transformed into TSA agents, literally instructed to fully empty every bag of every student. People who had forgot they were carrying a pocket knife, or lighter were instantly hit with multiple weeks detention. The whole process took hours and the first class and a half of the school day was completely skipped point enter Brian. Brian was a normal teenager, he liked video games, was a bit nerdy, just like you and me, except he also had Asperger's syndrome, and as a result wasn't the best at judging what would happen in emotionally tense situations. Anyways, Brian, the legend, decided he was going to play a joke on the new school TSA policy by throwing an extremely random assortment of stuff in his bag. Most of it was harmless, a 12 inch dill, do, duct tape, an assortment of religious holy texts, and of course, a Geiger counter it was the Geiger counter that did him in. The teacher checking his bag was an old lady who had lost her sense of humor countless decades ago. She saw the Geiger counter, heard it clicking in that way only Geiger counters click, and immediately ducked for cover thinking it was a bomb. Brian picked it up and showed her that it was harmless, it's designed to measure radiation he told her. She wasn't having any of it. How could this insolent little sheet bring a prank bomb into the school? She almost died back there. Brian was brought to the superintendent, where he was given a month of suspension and a court date point Brian's story made its way across the school and the new superintendent got her notoriety. She even managed to make her reputation more radioactive by firing the best band director the school ever had and replacing him with her family friend who had zero teaching experience. Brian later told me he had to go to court twice, a Geiger counter was. Months later the whole school was gathered into the auditorium where we were collectively informed that the person who made the bomb threat had been caught and expelled. The entire auditorium erupted in applause, which lasted for 10 straight minutes. You see, we had realized, if we didn't stop clapping we wouldn't have to go back to class. The superintendent was beaming. This was the crown jewel of her achievement. I can just imagine her returning to her desk, pouring out a glass of whiskey, and patting herself on the back for another job well done. Personal experience, my dad was a teacher for many years, and one of the first things we did at the beginning of every school year was go over the student handbook slash rules and find the loopholes. I became very good at it, and escaped trouble a few times, just because I knew the rules better than the teachers attempting to enforce them. My junior year of high school, the principal was refusing to enforce dress codes. 
Our school was having an issue with a few specific freshman girls who wore short shorts that didn't cover the bottom half of their bottom, and some guys of varying grades wearing clearly homophobic or racist shirts. The problem with the girls was that if a male teacher called them out the girls said they were being sexually harassed. The guys would claim that, since the girls weren't being forced to change, they didn't have to either. So, a few friends and I were sick of the bullshit and jumped through the loopholes. Our school's dress code was separated by gender. So just because it said girls couldn't wear spaghetti straps, crop tops, booty shorts, skirts above mid-thigh, etc., that didn't mean boys couldn't. So my friends from theater, lacrosse, football, and any other dudes I could grab, went to school wearing everything girls couldn't. It was fantastic. Everyone was distracted obviously, and it took about two hours before someone found out I was the ringleader. I got sent to the office in my shredded, hot pink leggings, six inch skirt and recently cut in half crop top school spirit shirt. The biggest issue. The two assistant principals had gone to school with, or worked with my dad, and had known me for years, before I got to that high school, it's a small world, if you're from Ohio, and knew that it was the same type of sheet my dad would pull. They thought it was hilarious and clearly I wasn't breaking any rules, so they sent me back to class. Over fall break the school redid the dress code, to be unisex and ban basically anything, that wasn't plain and boring. When I was in 5th year I was in an art class with literally the worst teacher ever. She yelled at everyone, always contradicted herself, and didn't know how to handle a class of teenagers. She also had a strict no bully policy, and said all bullies will be dealt with immediately. This was bullshit. I sat next to a boy who probably the biggest beach in school. He bothered me constantly, picked on shy and even disabled kids, always played the victim when the teacher came around and would always get away with it. One day he was on an especially harsh bullying spree against a girl who didn't have a lot of confidence. When she went to the bathroom he spilled her water jug all over her pastel drawing that she had spent weeks on. He quickly threw her drawing in the bin before the teacher noticed and then went back and laughed about it with his friends. When she came back the teacher accused her of not doing her homework and threatened to fail her because she couldn't find her work. When I say a drawing I mean a large A2 piece of art that she spent weeks doing. Now crumpled up in the bin. As much as we tried to explain what happened she wouldn't listen and he started crying about how we were picking on him because he wasn't good at art. Later that day him and I were at the computer area doing research for our work and he left before I did. I was an absolute sheet of a child, and drew a very unflattering, doodle of our teacher with the caption Miss B sucks D under the keyboard. She found it the next day and thought it was him, he got suspended. I regret nothing. Not to toot my own horn, I went through a political awareness stage in 6th grade. What I mean by political awareness, was I was very into expressing my rights as a US citizen in any way I could. One way I tried to make trouble was I went over what the school dress code was and did everything I could to cause problems with my outfits. But not in the way you would think. I didn't wear spaghetti straps or skirts that were a little too short. I would wear politically charged t-shirts. What I mean by politically charged, they were radically republican slash conservative. Why republican? Majority of the teachers in my school district were liberal democrats. I knew that wearing those shirts was going to get a rise out of them. Oh boy, and was I so right. I had to go to the office multiple times during that school year, and was often told to turn the shirt inside out, take it off, and change it into a shirt the school would give me or something. I would go into how it infringed upon my first amendment right to free speech, and I technically was not going against any school policy, and there is nothing about my shirt that can be considered inappropriate. I even got my dad into it because he thought it was hilarious. Most of the teachers in the school district we are absolutely terrible people, and it was so easy to trigger them. Eventually, the school gave up sending me to the office as often as they did, because nothing ever came of it. I continued to wear that shirt two or three times a week. There is even a yearbook picture with me standing on a desk arm spread wide, with the political message displayed for anybody to read, and you can definitely read it in the photo point, before you pounce on me, I'm not a republican, I'm not a democrat, I fall right into the middle, and consider myself a libertarian these days. 
I wouldn't say it was that amazing, but my classmates certainly were in disbelief. Point I moved into a different country and started school for the first time, didn't know the rules were that different. Back in the place I previously lived in, kids had their phones out all the time, texting during classes, teachers didn't care. Point new school had very strict policies, which I was happy to respect. One day during class I felt my phone vibrate, on silent, in my pocket. I waited until lunch break, to check my phone outside of school, we were allowed to leave school during lunch break. I stepped outside of the building, and called him to see, if everything was okay. It wasn't. Dad had a medical condition, where he wouldn't form scabs, and sometimes a small injury could mean he'd lose a lot of blood. Well he just cut himself, and called me to come home to keep an eye on him, because he was feeling lithated, and could pass out and possibly bleed out point during this conversation, the vice principal saw me through the window, and gave me an ugly look, and wiggled her finger at me in a you, come here, motion, phones were not allowed outside, the school either, I had to completely leave school premises, I didn't know the rules, I thought it was okay, so I just used my finger at her to signify one moment, please and carried on with the conversation with my dad point after that I made another significant mistake by turning around to enter the school again and head towards the vice principal's office to see what she wanted. I misunderstood her. She wanted me to come to her window. Me walking towards her office seemed like I just turned my back on her and left. She literally storms out of the office, face red in anger, before I could get to her door. She pulls me into the office and points at her open hand, signifying I should give her my phone, so she can confiscate it. At this point I still have no idea I broke any rules, so I look at her hand closely, trying to see what she's showing me. What? I don't see anything. She's about to explode, thinking I'm just mocking her. Yells give me your phone. I'm confused. Why does this crazy angry lady want my property? Why? I say. She just repeats, give me your phone. No. I'm very confused, I'm getting no explanation, she just wants my phone. Of course I refuse. I'm giving you one last chance, you don't want to see what happens. Give. Me. Your. Phone. Me. U.M.M. No. She's not comprehending how I can be so disrespectful, and not listen to her blatant commands, which to me just seem like abuse of power and an attempt at bullying me. I'm not having any of it. Her jaw almost hits the floor. You can either give me your phone or we can go to see the principal right now me thinking. This is supposed to scare me. I'd love to see the principal. He's a reasonable respectful man. We can go see him. Maybe I can tell him how you're trying to bully me. I say, okay, let's go see the principal she is in disbelief with my reaction. We walk out of her office, get in the principal's office, and she starts explaining how I defied her, how disrespectful I was, and I finally start understanding her side of the story. Principal gets mad. Then I explain my side of the story, and he calms down. He explains that the fact that I didn't know the rules do not excuse me, and I need to hand over the phone. I agree. Finally someone explained it to me. Thank you. I talk about the problem my dad has and explain that I need to go home. They say they can't let me. It's a school policy. The school day is not over yet. I can't just leave and not come back. The lunch break was ending soon point I'm standing there staring. Are they actually serious? My dad is home alone. There were only the two of us living together at that time. Possibly going to pass out soon due to blood loss and they just can't let me go home because of some silly policy. I look at them both, turn around and walk out of the office point I then explain the situation to my friends, who are in awe. No one has stood up to the vice principal. I guess everyone was too afraid of her. I was there for a few days and she just seemed like a crazy lady. Of course I'm not gonna listen to her. My friend asks me, so what are you going to do now? I say, I'm going to go home, and... I just walked out of the school and headed straight home point I didn't get into any trouble, teachers didn't find out I left, and I got my phone back two weeks later, yes, two weeks if your phone is seen by a teacher, dad was okay, stop the bleeding after a while. Back when I was in a catholic school, I used to bring a pack of playing cards to play games with my friends, mostly along the lines of go fish and other kiddie card games. 
Unfortunately, the school admin found out, and they had a very broad definition of gambling tools, and do not put things into context. After unsuccessfully arguing that, no, we were not gambling, thus the cards are not gambling paraphernalia, they proceeded to argue that the rules clearly state, black and white, that gambling implements are expressly banned as stated in the school handbook. After my pack was confiscated, I decided to be a smartest and brought a Tarot de Marcel's pack the next day, did a few readings, then openly taught my friends how to play poker and blackjack using various rocks and pebbles as a stand-in for chips and sheer pride in our poker, face as a stand-in for money. I even berated them when they attempted to gamble for real point, when the admin confronted me yet again, all I had to do was to show a random major arcana card to trick him into thinking that I was performing a tarot reading and successfully argue that there is no rule, explicit or implied, against the performance of non-Christian rituals and no rule against possession of magical implements in the school handbook. I also pointed out that the school has made its policy of religious tolerance very clear over the years just in case he has the bright idea of attempting to plug this hole with such new rules and we have enough non-Christian students in school that the fallout will be felt if they try to do it anyway. I even offered a reading afterwards to which he declined point thank goodness the admin has no background at all on magic. Not so much a rebellion against rules story, but an FU to a coercive teacher my senior year in high school, back in 91. When it came time for the prom, there was a vote to decide its venue. The choices were. 1. High school gym with a meal in the cafeteria. 2. At a local hotel. 3. On a river boat without a meal. Or 4. On a river boat with a meal point well. The class two years before had their prom a river boat, and people still knew that it had sucked. So the winner of the vote was at a local hotel. However, the daughter of the teacher slash advisor for the student council cried to her daddy that she wanted her prom to be a romantic evening on a river boat. So the teacher coerced the student council into combining the vote from the last two into one, and the official senior prom was on the boat point a group of seniors decided that they would not be participating. Instead, they arranged their own formal dance. It was not on the same night. When the teacher caught wind of what was going on, he tried to shut the alternate dance down. However, the principal, who was wise to what was happening, put that teacher in his place. Point the alternate dance was a huge success. The profits, not a lot, but at least there were some, from that dance were donated to the local animal shelter. Kids had a blast. Minimal adult supervision, but as far as I know, there were no problems that night point the official dance, well, it happened. Once the boat left the dock, kids were stuck there for hours. Their meal was catered by the high school cafeteria and the choice of beverage was a half pint of white milk in a cardboard carton point years later. The teacher slash advisor took early retirement when someone started looking into where the student council funds were going. This certainly isn't a huge act, but still when I was a kid I wore a hat backwards every day. My district had a no hat rule implemented when I was in third grade. They were never very strict about it, and my classroom teachers never cared, so I kept wearing my hat every day. We got a new principal when I was in fourth grade though, and that rule seemed to be the only thing she cared about. She stopped me countless times in the hallway to tell me to take my hat off. There would also be time she would pop into my classroom and chastise me in front of my entire class. I'd take my hat off for a bit, but it would be back on my head again before the day was over I started being more careful. I started only wearing the hat before slash after school or in the classroom. One day, I noticed that none of the girls ever got in trouble for wearing thick headbands, bandanas, bennies, or hats. So I wore my hat in the hallway specifically to get caught point I walked past her in the hallway with my hat on, waved at her, and with the biggest grin on my face, said good morning. She, of course, told me I needed to remove my hat. I asked her why I had to, but the girls never did. Her only response was gentlemen always remove their hats when entering buildings as a sign of respect. What she didn't realize was that this gave me the all clear to wear my hat during recess because I then realized the rule only applied to while we were in the building. 
She didn't like that, but she couldn't call me out on it point I don't remember much else, but I do remember writing her a letter as part of a writing assignment we did in class trying to persuade her to let us wear hats in school 4th grade me just really wanted to wear a damn hat, and I couldn't understand why she wouldn't let me. Let me tell you the story of the coolest guy to ever all my high school. My school hosts a ranch out where they take all the student body to a ranch that was loaned to the school and increase companionship among all the students. We barbecued, we played games, chill out, no alcohol OFC. The school tries to set up the whole thing once a semester, but the students that wish to go must pay $10 to cover expenses. Either 70% pays up the ranch out is approved, and that day is considered a holiday for school purposes. That means several guys preferred not paying and getting school free day, but only if the trip is approved point thus we get to the story. I'm at my senior year and last semester, it's the last chance for us seniors to enjoy a ranch out, but only 65% of the student body paid up meaning there wouldn't be ranch out, thus we seniors in the light of that we wouldn't get one last ranch out got bummed out. In comes a friend, as I shall dub dude dude was those happy go lucky popular guys at school, was friends with pretty much everyone, was no jockey nor douchy, had his night gig jaging at events, later at clubs, and was pretty much very likable. Now the day we were informed, that school told us there wouldn't be any ronch out we groaned and whined, all day long through our class breaks, and in the second one dude comes over several guys saying, that we should chant out in front of the office saying we want ranch out, we knew he wanted to stir sheet up, because of laugh out loud, he had no ulterior motives behind it, but little by little in 10 minutes dude managed, to get pretty much everyone in school chanting we want ranch out, we want ranch out. Now imagine 700 high schoolers chanting out in front of the director's offices while getting told to go to our classrooms for 40 minutes when everything died out it ended fast. We went to out classrooms, we didn't get the ranch out, on grounds that the teachers knew we were fooling around cause how the hell does everyone go to chant when almost half the students didn't even pay. Thus they deemed everything inconsequential. Dude got chewed on obviously, he got suspended for two days. But the thing that hurt him was that he was considered for a special leadership scholarship for the school's step-up college and awarded to students that performed well as leaders. Sadly that stunt cost him the scholarship. Nevertheless it didn't drag him down and remained chill and chipper all the way through point afterwards his DJ skills got him signed at a label and got to tour the world. He got back to school to finish his marketing major. Nowadays he's still performing, got married to another DJ, and goes to Wonderland, Tomorrowland and such to perform. He was and is the coolest guy that I've ever known at school. Dunno if it classifies as rebelling against rules, but it was against the authority at school, so might as well tell about it. Point the old principal at school was a total beach, so she didn't tolerate anybody who stood against her. My math teacher was one of the top three in town. She got a bunch of bad students to a good enough level to get into university and a lot of good students to an excellent level, placing above average at math tournaments, winning awards, etc. After the principal cut our extracurricular activities that prepared us for the preliminary math entrance exam at the best university in our country half a year before it and pretty much tried to force us to attend her language course which prepared us for our mandatory language exam which didn't concern us at all and pretty much only really weak students attended it. One day after an argument with my math teacher she gave her a blank sheet of paper and told her something like know your place slash you know what to do next. It was supposed to be my math teacher's resignation letter. After thinking about what to do in this critical moment, my teacher pulled up the next day and gave in the blank piece of paper all filled up. The principal was shocked to see that it was actually filled with all the biggest achievements of my teacher's students throughout the last few years. Only a few years because she couldn't fit more as it was only one sheet. The principal lost her job a year later after a change in the ruling party, but my math teacher is still going strong. My best buddy in class was deathly serious about his education. One day a maths teacher decided to move up a test a few days to the day after. This is already a dick move in and of itself, but it wasn't allowed anyway because we already had another test planned that day, but the teacher didn't care. 
making this more of a story about the best way to rebel for the rules. He told the teacher as much and said he wouldn't make the test the next day. We come to class the day after and the room is set up for the test. He tries to discuss it again with the teacher but he's adamant. There's a test now. So the both of us, I mean, gotta show some solidarity, walk out of class and go to one of the admins. Test got rescheduled. Rest of the class had to make it twice because of it point also there was a rule in school. No food or drink in class except water. I'm diabetic though, and once during chemistry class I felt I was getting hypoglycemic. I was assured teachers were told of my condition, so I didn't want to disturb class and just got a juice box from my bag. Teacher didn't appreciate this. Fair enough, we were in the science lab, so I get them being even more strict about food. So I asked if I could go out into the hall, but was told I should stop being hilarious and focus on class again. I thought to myself well, I can show you hilarious, so I got out my phone, visibly entered the emergency services number, but didn't hit dial. I put away my juice box and told the teacher that I'd be rendered unconscious probably before the end of the class, and when that happened, if he would hit dial and explain to the operator I was experiencing a hypoglycemic coma, and to call my dad afterward, he'd probably want to know a sap he'd have to drop everything and meet me in the hospital. Didn't take long for the teacher to look as pale as I was, and I was excused. Sorry if this sounds braggish, but this seems like the perfect opportunity to share this story point. So I'm currently attending a university of applied sciences which will remain nameless. Here, we used to have a counselor system. As in, every student got assigned a teacher as their personal guidance counselor, who they could reach out to if they needed help or support with anything. Of course this went for basic school stuff, but also for emotional problems or other issues of that sort point as someone who struggles with depression and other personal issues, I know how important it can be for many students to have a personal connection with someone who can support them and help them with sensitive issues. So imagine my surprise when one day I received an email from the school that the whole counselor system would be scrapped and replaced by a new bureau point this bureau would only be open on a handful of set times during the week, would consist of a small handful of people, and would be responsible for all counselor duties. The switch to this system would be made within 5 days 5 days. For many students that struggle with personal issues this is a hugely impactful change, and the school basically says screw you, deal with it. I got so furious over this, that I wrote a long, formal but clearly angry email to the higher ups responsible for the new bureau expressing the issues I had with this sudden change, and the heavy limitations this new system put on those that need the help the most point what was their response? To summarize, wow, thank you for your letter. You are clearly very dedicated to this. How would you like to come work for the bureau? They literally sent me a job offer for a part-time position working for the bureau. I wish I was joking. Two similar cases with vastly different outcomes. First one, middle school. I'm around 14 and the class omega. So, during the recess the guys think of a wonderful new idea of pulling a dirty sack cloth bag over my head. I had enough taste to appreciate actual sackcloth in the middle of a modern metropolis, but otherwise as you can probably guess I was left out of the fun entirely point okay, the period begins, I'm left alone and the teacher comes into class, as usual, everyone's talking loudly, completely ignoring her, 41 kids in a room is no joke, people, she is patient for around a minute, and then starts trying to calm everyone down. Eventually, she loses her nerve and shouts something around the lines of oh I don't get you people naturally, this is exactly when everybody chooses to shut up, and in the eerie silent smile her voice is very very audible, oh, you don't get it, so go fuck yourself point detention wasn't a thing in our school, so I just got thrown away for the rest of the period, which I didn't mind in the slightest, because I hated math with a passion. Naturally, I apologized afterwards, and she had literally nothing to do with why I was so angry. Understandably, this didn't help her like me, up to the point when she hit me on the head with a ruler once for being too thick. This was my last year in that school, I believe point the second one was not exactly a rebellion, much less for how cool it played off in the end point I started in middle and high school. Like, badly. 
I still do sometimes when I'm anxious, and back then anxious was like my second middle name, and I wasn't a model student either, so you can guess answering when called was a huge mess every time point. So we are in our vice principal sociology class, I believe, and she calls me. Okay, I stand up and do my thing. A bunch of incoherent sounds and my face is like a scorched banana all the time. The rest of the class begins chuckling, which doesn't help. The vice just sits politely, saying nothing point so at some point I'm so frustrated I forget where I am and what am I doing and exclaim loudly, th, th, sss, sshh how fact this, the class bursts out in shocked laughter. The vice doesn't as much as lift a brow. Please, continue she says that was one ultimate thing that made me respect a teacher you could get through to me and she earned a freaking pedestal among those who did that day well not that i didn't respect her at all before but this still was a change i did something like this once i'm a year 11th student and this story happens at the beginning of the year during school pictures i had just purchased a brand new pair of ripped jeans and they were expensive hollister they were amazing I love those jeans. Anyways I have a reputation for always wearing something black most days I wear all black. Today was one of those days I was wearing all black, head to toe, and I was wearing said jeans my principal is in a shat I have really bad anxiety, medically diagnosed, and I was still getting used to my new medication for it. At the time, I had just turned 16 I'm in one of the four photo lines that they had set up in the gym my principal spots me. I'll let it slide for today, but you can't wear those anymore point mind you there was a girl wearing a mini skirt not 2 feet next to me, she had no leggings or anything else on underneath them, she also looked like your typical high school student with all of the fashion statements at the time, I looked at her, and back at him, he looked at her, and back at me then, he straight up told me I see OULDNT wear my jeans again. I was fuming, I had paid almost $60 for these jeans alone I get my picture done, and yell at him to fuck off, and walk out of the gym in a swarm of people, so that he didn't know it was me point another time later on in the year he told me I couldn't wear my Benny, when no one had said anything earlier in the day, I simply took it off, and put it right back on when he wasn't looking he then walked up to my desk while I was working and knocked on the desk. I was listening to music. I didn't respond. So he stood there and stared at me until I looked up me. Can I help you? You're not supposed to be wearing that hat. Do I have to discipline you? Me. No sir. Slowly takes off Benny. Principal leaves. I put it right back on. Can I post myself? One year my school decided to make senior project a requirement of graduation. I don't remember exactly what the requirements were, but it was not an insignificant amount of work. It was a bunch of log time and a long essay point it was extremely ill advised. People were outraged, and rightfully so. The school was in a good area, and had probably the highest graduation rate out of all the nearby schools, but there were plenty of kids for whom this would be the nail in the coffin. Kids who lived on the outskirts of town in not so great areas and kids who were working after school and weekends to help support their families I had one super cool teacher who completely disagreed with the situation. So with his blessing I created a student group overnight to combat this. Stare. Students together against ridiculous requirements. Ugh. I know. It was cheesy on purpose though. I went home. Found some clipboards I knew we had. And printed out a sheet ton of flowers and petition sheets. The next day I handed clipboards out to like-minded friends, and we set about plastering the posters everywhere and collecting signatures. Over the next couple weeks we collected over two-thirds of the senior class signatures we came in one day and an assembly was called, you guessed it, just to rescind the senior project requirement. Here's where it gets good though. Remember that super cool teacher I had? I had him log my hours. I wrote up a little essay. Stapled all the signatures with it, and dropped that sheet off as my senior project. Never heard back on a grade, I wonder why. My sophomore year of high school, anything considered revealing, was banned for girls only. We are literally in the middle of lunch when this tall blonde walks in with a bright pink, skin tight dress on, no panties and showing her as cheeks. Did I mention she had stilettos on? Anyhow, everybody in the lunch hall did a double take. Our principal, however, was red-faced and extremely hospitable. 
The girl is a new student, a junior, and should have to follow the rules that have been imposed on the rest of the school population, right? Wrong. Two weeks pass, the girl is still wearing revealing clothing, and we can't understand why the rest of us aren't allowed to wear shorts, skirts, archilading uniforms, or any dresses that are shorter than arm's length. So one day, closer to the senior graduation ceremony, the females in my class decide that we are going to cause a wave. We plan on wearing shorts, but not just any shorts, soft shorts. Those shorts infamous for being worn by cheerleaders and inevitably getting rolled down to the perfect fit. Or so that's what we thought back then laugh out loud. Anyhow, we show up to school, there's about 100 of us in total, and we are dressed down with our shorts on. Some with converses, some with combat boots, some with flip, flops and some with sneakers, we were there to cause a scene. When I tell you that they tried their damn desk to get us all to go home and change, and nothing worked. She I I it, it was beautiful. They had no choice but to send us all back to class and change the dress code because why are we hiding our bodies? Educate your son slash daughters on being respectful at all costs. A woman should be able to wear what makes her and her body happy without being subjected to punishments due to some man or woman's, some body's child's, insatiable appetite. A kid in my high school bought a trucker cap with white mesh backing and a black front. He took this hat to the mall where got it painted at one of those airbrush t-shirt stores. In the fanciest cursive script it read bonus. That would be bad enough for the administrators, but not for him, because that artistically written word only occupied the empty space in the lower left corner on the hat. The rest was filled with the most graphic, anatomically correct raging hard on cork you've ever seen. It was so well done, when I saw it for the first time my immediate thought was, that must have been expensive. Anyway he wore it around in between classes for about two weeks, before he was caught. It was during lunch when the vice principal, a woman in her mid-fifties, who we used to joke, hadn't been touched by a man, since they started talking and the pictures noticed he was wearing a hat. She calmly sat down beside him, and asked to see it. I will never be able to accurately describe the look on her face after he casually tossed it to her and she actually saw what was on the front. But I can tell you this, that moment happened nearly 20 years ago and I can still see it all play out in crystal clear 4K HD in my head point thing is, he wasn't protesting anything. There wasn't a ban on hats or anything. This guy just literally didn't give a fuck. He was suspended for 2 weeks but was allowed to do all his assignments at home. So basically he was published with a vacation point tragically month after he go back he was involved in a fatal DUI. Tried to drive home from a party on windy back roads lined with trees. Half of our class attended his funeral. I didn't know him well enough to feel like I belonged at his funeral, but he will forever be a faking legend in my book. TLDR. Kid brushed a massive cork on a hat and made the vice principal nearly have an aneurysm. Not in protest to a rule by the way, the toilets and the washroom at our school were faking disgusting. So in protest to that, my friend and I decided to vandalize the whole washroom so that the school wouldn't have a choice to make some fixes. Our plan was genius. We broke the handles on all 5 stalls, then went back to class ok so basically I was in this huge friend group of guys and pranks were constant. This day we decided to win. We found our mates and found our way to the vape room, washroom, we were having peso 10 kids out of 100 vanishing wasn't noticed anyway. When we got there I suggested we see how many of us we could fit inside one stall. Now I wasn't planning on coming in so when the other 8 were inside and told me to enter I asked them can you even close the door. I won't fit slam first 5 minutes were filled with scarring claustrophobic screams, hilarious snapchat videos, and phone calls. Remember there are 8 guys standing chest to back, and dick and us basically 30 minutes, my buddy and I are realizing we perhaps didn't think this through properly, and start to feel a little guilty 1 hour. The lads are getting SWETY 1.5 hour, some of the guys got the idea, to try to climb out through the roof. It was made of that weak stuff, where you could lift, and move the plates the first 2 guys were successful actually, but the third one brought the whole faking roof down. I honestly think if I were to have recorded my mate bringing the whole roof down over everyone and everything, I would be a millionaire. 
2 hours. After 2 hours covered in both their own sweat, each other's sweat, roof tiles and years worth of dust, the janitor came through. Just imagine the noises that came from that faking stall as the janitor were slicing the door with a circular saw. Safe to say me and my buddy have promised to take the secret that we broke the handle and fooled them in the stall to our graves. It was one of those situations where your extreme amount of guilt is overpowered by the hilarity of the whole thing point will never have more fun in my life. I was a goody goody teacher's pet in high school, but I had my rebellious moments for some odd reason the metal detectors would go off on me, even though I had nothing on me. The teachers usually just passed me through, but one day a new teacher insisted on making me go through several times and checking me which made me miss the bell and end up tardy, so she marched me to the detention room and said I had to write an apology to her during lunch detention. This was back in the 90s when gel pens were popular so of course I had a white gel pen, so I wrote my letter stating that I wasn't sorry and that I wouldn't have been late if she hadn't held me up for 15 minutes for no reason. I told her to squirt lemon juice on it and she could read my letter my senior year was short, I just needed took credits and I was done. My boyfriend had graduated the year before and had joined the military and I was his ride home for the holidays. All of my teachers were fine with me skipping the last day of the semester to go get him and let me take my finals early or just went ahead and pass me. My English teacher though refused and said if I missed my final she would fail me and that was one of the credits I needed. I tried so many times to talk to her but she was hateful to everyone so I went to the principal and laid out my issue. I explained I was more than willing to take the exam but I needed to do it a day early. I was an honor student and my boyfriend now husband was loved by many of our teachers so she sided with me. Many of the teachers talked to her as well siding with me. That teacher was so mad point one day we had a substitute and he decided to throw out our work and read the bible to us. Several students including me protested and said we wanted our school work. He got mad and thumped me in the head with the bible and said I was a sinner. I stood up and walked out and went straight to the principal to file a complaint. This was an old principal that didn't like me much and tried blowing me off until I threatened to call my grandma and let her file a formal complaint with the school board. Never saw that sub again. In elementary school, I got into a fight. Aka, I got a kid out in lightning, basketball game, and he turned around and punched me. Instead of punishing just that kid they tried punishing the entire school. The beach of a teacher made a rule that balls couldn't be brought out for recess the rest of the year. I was pretty convinced that she was being sexist and tried to only punish the guys because the girls didn't participate in any sports at recess for the most part. I decided to just start bringing in anything that wasn't a ball. The first day we played football with a hacky sack. When that got taken away, we switched to a frisbee. Each day we'd get something different taken away. We finally ran out of ideas and were playing with a towel wrapped in rubber bands in the shape of a ball. My parents got called in from work that day to pick me up from the principal's office. Little did they know that my parents knew what was going on and were feeding me with ideas each day because they thought it was shitty that we were being punished for one kid's behavior. I'll never forget my dad asking the principal to show him in the rule book where it says a kid cannot bring a hacky sack to recess. It now says something along the lines of teachers have the right to take away ball, frisbee, hacky sack, or other toy privileges in the rule book because of me. In my old secondary school, there was some stupid rules you lunch had to be whole meal and vegan friendly. The school canteen even protested against this due to it affecting what the canteen was allowed to serve. Since the school was a 30 minute walk from town, and each break is 15 to 30 minutes, a lot happened. Even to the point where a first year fainted from hunger because she refused to eat what she was given. The idiot of a principal didn't change the rules use the preferred pronouns for that student. It may be sexist, but if you went to my school you knew why they reverted back. Basically, this rule came up after one of those parents wanted to start educating non-binary pronouns to students during sex ed, and oh boy it was a stupid move. For the next couple of months, whenever you were telling on someone, the first thing the teachers would as is now is that they're preferred pronouns, but even they would have struggled to think of their pronouns. 
half the students took the complete piss out of the gender pronouns, while others just lost interest and went back to using the binary point the school jackets. The sheet hole I went to wasn't a private school, they were just strict as hell on your jacket. If you wore your own in, then it would be took off you for 3 months, unless parents came in and claimed it back. Not only that but you would get detention every Friday. This policy was in the school since 2010, but since my younger brother is in his final year, the new principal, thank faking Christ, but too late, lifted a lot of policies, one of which is this, due to parents not being able to fork over 75 euros for a school jacket point finally, the attendance policy, the way it was handled in my school was absurd. I get that teachers can be late sometimes, but being constantly late is another matter. While obviously students have to be on time otherwise 3 LATES equals detention, the staff were just horrible. To put it simply, they would hold up a 40 minute class by chilling in the staff room for 30 minutes, only to give you homework without the lessons with the exercises, or use the sheety printers. Since this is happening with staff 50% of classes are being mitched or constantly complained to the board because of this. There are 9 classes classes. Two breaks, every day with Friday having seven, one break. Hell, my leaving cert suffered badly because of this that I just want to repeat it. I never got into my college because of these assholes and now my parents just believed that I struggled in school point. While I'm grateful that him out, if that school were in America, that would have been shot the hell out. I know it's not funny, but considering that there were multiple pen knife attacks in the school, I wouldn't be surprised if someone brought in a gun, if Ireland hadn't had strict gun laws. All I can say is that I could never go back to that school not even for a reunion after the sheet they put me through. I just want to tell the staff to fuck off. My high school banned teachers from issuing bathroom passes except for what they deemed emergencies. This was because a few kinds got caught either having sex in the bathroom during class hours or doing drugs in said bathrooms. They added on two minutes to passing period as a way to give students extra time to use the bathrooms. For me though, I had my second period class on the complete opposite side of the building from my third period class and seven minutes was barely enough time to navigate the crowded lunchroom and hallways. Get to my locker and get to class on time. I usually didn't have time to use the bathroom unless the heavens spoke and I ran into zero foot traffic point this particular day I really had to pee but went straight to class since I figured my third period teacher would let me go since the male bathrooms were literally the next door down from her classroom maybe 15 to 20 feet. She said no when I asked her. I tried to hold it. But we had 90 minute classes and my boulder was already pulsing when I got to class. I asked again and again and again, and each time I was met with a stern not going to happen Mr. Crew Chief so stop asking. Finally I made the threat of pissing in her trash can if she didn't let me go. Of course she didn't believe me and said yeah, okay. So I got up, got the small black waste bin by the door, took it the opposite corner of the room where no one was sitting and was fully prepared to drain the main vein in that trash can. The teacher freaked out and told me to get Myers to the office. I made a stop at the bathroom on the way. I got suspended for three days for threatening to expose myself to my classmates. One of two times times I didn't get in trouble at home for getting suspended, because of this I had started a movement in my school, and during those three days, so many kids threatened to pee in the trash cans, I heard if the teachers didn't let them go to the bathrooms, that the administration ended up getting rid of that rule within a week. So this was pretty recent. My school is a charter school and doesn't place much care on religion, but as long as you don't specify anything they don't care. This brings us to Halloween. They told us we could not wear costumes, uniforms only, but could wear macup and accessories, besides headwear, if we so pleased, just as long as they weren't offensive or gory. They said that expecting no one to do much, because costumes weren't allowed. The thing is, there are a few macup artists in my school including me. Now everyone had their ideas passed through the principal. You basically had to or else. Well, when it was my turn, I was completely turned down. This was a little weird until I realized why. I was the only one with an idea that wasn't cute or pretty. 
Most of them wanted to be fairies or something. I wanted to be dead. This definitely pissed me off. But it was made worse by the fact that she made a slight ladylike comment point so. In retaliation, I come to school with an extra bag and a plan. If I was gonna get in trouble I had to go big. I hid the bag in my favorite teacher's closet and came for it during my last class. When I got to my last class I proceeded to set up what I needed. Then in the middle of class, I pull out and glue two small handmade horns to my forehead. Technically not a hat, so I got away with it. Then I do a full on devil face of Macube. I spend that entire class shaping my face with prosthetics, mainly latex and cotton it was a pain in the ass to get in the right shape, but it was the only thing that would be easy to hide and Macube into my homemade costume. The leather jacket I wore helped. The teacher was stunned, but didn't stop me, and this one black guy kept saying that I looked bad as. I don't normally talk to him, so it was cool. When the bell hit, I waited till everyone reported back to their last check-in, changed into this half-burnt shirt. I walked out of that class in full costume. People were freaked out, but I was having a great time. I even winked at the principal as I walked out. I've got a story that I think fits it is a really a long ride, but I get a ton of love every time I tell this story. This story starts my freshman year of high school. I had a close friend that attempted suicide at the beginning of the year by taking something like 30 Tylenol PM pills we will call her case she ended up pulling through but was hospitalized for a period of time and from what I remember damaged her liver in the process. From that day on, a shared administrator, we had 6 to 8 administrators in the school, think of them as a vice principals in a school of plus slash dash 2200 students, made K's life hell. Miss. I would routinely raid Kay's purse probably once a week or so. Every time she would raid her purse, she would find cigarettes and give Kay a 3 hour detention. This went on for most of our freshman year toward the end of our freshman year Ms. raided Kay's purse and this time found an Adderall pill. Kay was not prescribed Adderall. Ms. called Kay's parents into school that day and let them know that their options were to check her into a 30 day inpatient drug program or she would be expelled from school. Although Kay had made great strides with her mental health over the course of the year, this was too much. Kay went home that day and hung herself point I was devastated. Like any rational 9th grader, I penned a letter, several pages long, outlining my thoughts. I expressed my devastation at the loss of Kay and made Mizza know that I completely disagreed with her handling of an at-risk youth with mental health issues. I held little back. Furthermore, I had several hundred other students sign it. I also called out one of the school counselors who had completely fabricated details leading to Caitlin's death when he stopped by all of her classes offering counseling services to students who needed it the day after it happened point I stopped by Ms. A's desk three times the following day to give her said letter but to no avail I never caught her in her office. With the school day ending, I left the letter with her secretary and went on my way. The following day, the second the morning bell rang, I was pulled from class by my principal and the counselor who I had called a liar. A 1-2 to two hour meeting followed, where I believed the assumed I would car and apologize. I did not. I stood by my letter, calmly communicated my feelings, and our meeting ended at a standstill. They let me go on my way and said they are sorry that I feel that way a point from that day on. Misa hated me. She didn't do anything to, to me specifically, but it was quite obvious the stares I received over the following several years left little question point fast forward to the first day of second semester my senior year. Miza called me into her office with two pieces of paper that listed all of the periods I had skipped my first semester. Calmly Miza asked me to explain myself. I don't remember specifics, but it was something like 50 or 60 classes that I had skipped. I say this with absolute humility, but high school came very easy to me. Despite frequently skipping, especially my senior year, my grades were always great. I kindly informed Miz of that, while I probably shouldn't be skipping class, my GPA was still above a 4.0, and I don't really see a major issue. Miza proceeded to make me call my father, on speakerphone, and make him aware of my period absences. After telling my dad the number of period absences I had first semester, my father unaware that he was on speakerphone, asked how my grades were. 
Upon letting him know I still had all A's, his response, verbatim, was well I don't really see what the problem is. Mizo was livid. You could tell that she had been waiting years for this moment. The grand slam, ultimate middle finger to the kid that wrote her a nasty letter, absolutely certain my parents would be livid with me skipping all that class. When he wasn't, she devised a new plan. Miza decided that I would serve two three hour detentions a week, every week, for the rest of my senior year, to make up for the classes I'd missed point I was screwed. She got me point that is, until I had the ultimate idea. Until I decided to stop by my advisor's office and ask him if I had the necessary credits to graduate early. Mr. W, my counselor, was a great guy and we had a great relationship. He was also entirely unaware of the ongoing situation I had with Ms. A. Mr. W informed me that while I did have the necessary credits, it was too late. I would have had to have had signed permission from all my current teachers, signed permission from our head principal, and proof I was enrolled in 12 hours of classes, completed that day, I ask Mr. W hypothetically though, if I happened to have all that done today, I could graduate early? Mr. W admitted yes, although did not see how that was possible point I left school immediately and went home, called my dad on the way, and asked him. If he was okay with me graduating early and knocking out some general ed classes at the local community college before heading off to university. He loved the idea. I made it home and had the same discussion with my mom and she was all for it. By lunchtime I had signed up for 12 hours at our local community college and was headed back to school. Frantically I made a lap, got signed permission from all of my teachers and made one last stop at the principal's office to do the same. I finished this right around 2.40 in the afternoon my high school let out at 2.52 point the last stop I made that day was at Ms. A's office and I could not have been happier to see her sitting behind her desk when I arrived. Ms. A while I sincerely appreciate you looking out for the students here and reinforcing the idea that our actions have consequences, I will not be able to serve your detentions and why is that, Mr. G, well. As of 10 minutes ago, I'm officially a graduate of PSHS. I graduated a semester early and will be going to school starting next week at STLCC. The look on her face was absolutely priceless and I left her office without another word. Obligatory excuse my English point this is actually something I did myself back when I was like 14 over 15 years old. It's not that extreme, but I still thought it was pretty funny point I still remember in the first 2-3 two, two, years of high school, this was in Germany, during recess, a lot of people used to take their break in the foyer of the school, which was a pretty big room which lead to the major staircases. Right next to the foyer there was the cafeteria, where also a big part of the students would sit and stand during the break. So you can imagine especially in winter the place was pretty packed, but that was not a problem in any way, because there was still enough space for all the students, but when I got into the third year of high school, they suddenly implemented the rule that students were not allowed to stand in the foyer at all during recess. There were teachers patrolling the place and lecturing any students that would dare to stand there. Dumb thing was, the cafeteria was no problem to be in. Dumber thing was, you had to cross the foyer to get to the cafeteria. What this lead to was essentially that the cafeteria was completely packed with students every recess to the point where there was not much space left to move, while the big hall in front of it was completely empty. And if you did not find a place in this mess slash did not like to be in such a packed place, you essentially had no other option than to go outside, regardless of the weather and your clothing point so one time, when I came down the stairs, because a teacher ended the class late, I found this sight to be so funny that I snapped a photo with my phone. I then later would add in big, bold text over it, we aren't allowed in the foyer anymore, but in the cafeteria it's no problem. I printed it out and pinned it to the most central board in the place and expected it to get taken down within maybe one to two, two days. But this little piece of satire got to hang there for over six months before it mysteriously disappeared. Point I believe this was due to the fact that the teachers also were upset about the illogical rules and were tired that they had to kick student after student out of the foyer. Sadly the rule was never changed again during my time as a student at that school. Point TLDR created a little satirical piece out of a dumb rule which was tolerated by the teachers for half a year. 
This isn't something that someone did to rebel, but rather a legendary prank. This happened to my brother who was a freshman last year. There was this senior who absolutely never did his homework, would just skip all of his tests and miss like half of the days in the year. He was the general troublemaker and would always do things that would get him close to getting suspended but would receive other consequences. Eventually, in his senior year, we would constantly be getting detention and got suspended a few times but somehow never got expelled. He was the type of crazy quiet kid you would expect to be a school shooter, but rather he did something that was far more memorable. He wouldn't really participate in the rest of the senior pranks, but had a plan that he did all by himself, that nobody understood how he had the balls to do that. Our city has a high homeless population and he went to the general place that the majority of the homeless people lived with his truck. He spent the entire morning picking up about 15 homeless people at that point and he somehow did all of it without getting into any trouble. He came into school getting all of them to come through the main entrance. And these are like the crackhead ones from that really shitty part of town that have the longest hair that have never been washed before. Half the people were running as fast as they have ever ran and the other half was just trying to film. These people were literally crackheads and started jumping on people and trying to fight innocent students. Nobody was really harmed and the school was shut down for two days. Nobody ever knew what happened after that. I rebelled in school all the time. But the icing on the cake was the day my year head wanted me to leave the school and never come back. Now I'm not one for pulling pranks and doing them well but this to me was the best prank and fuck you to that guy point this is going to be long. I had been in trouble all day, it was stupid stuff really, but being in a strict school they took no prisoners. I had been kicked out of nearly every class and my year head was pissed. He collared me on the way to my forum room. He just blew up in my face telling me to clear my locker and get out of the school and never come back. I pointed it out to him that he didn't have the authority to do this. This is where the prank and foo comes in. I tell him I don't have a locker key point he asked me was there anything in my locker. I had not used the locker in I think about 6 months. I also knew that I had fac all in it 1 due to losing my locker and 2 I never used it anyway. He sent me to find the master key. I spent about 20 minutes looking for the teacher with the key just to waste his time more. I get back and he is looking really angry. He tells me I better have something in my locker. I told him I did. To be honest I did just a single scrap of paper. I wasn't lying. I open it up and his face just went read and of course I pissed myself laughing as I held up the paper to his face and told him I did have something point now this is where he lost it. I mean really lost it. Now this guy was not very tall and had an e-trimmed beard couple this with his last name small. He was faking red and just looked like a gnome. I faking lost it at the same time as he was shouting at me. I was laughing at the sheet he was saying to me. As he now told me I was on for after school detention. He had one failed to give my parents 24 hour notice and also the fact hard had told me he wanted me out of the school. I walked down to the detention room and this was my next plan. Feet on desks was a huge no-no in the school, and of course that's what I did. Put my on the desk, and folded my arms, and told him why bother, when he wanted me out of the school. He stormed off, and came back a few minutes later with my sister. She didn't even look at him, and told me my mum was outside. I walked out telling him I would see him tomorrow point of course he told me not to come back, and as I was walking off told him I will see him tomorrow, and waved my point, if you want to know what happened the next day I will give an update point sorry for the format I'm using my mobile, and guess my grandma is not so hot. In third grade my teacher was a crazy as whole. She gave us these monthly packets and I have multiple learning disabilities, dyslexia, dyscalculia, auditory processing disorder, yeah I'm a hot mess. Well after I did really poorly on the September and October packets at the beginning of the year she decided I needed extra help. It wasn't the help you'd expect her to give you, she gave me an extra worksheet for every page in the packet I got wrong. And when I didn't complete the packet or a single page one would be forced to get lunch detention. I response to this shitty teacher, my third grade self decided to say fuck it and do absolutely no work. My teacher actually retaliated back at me. She put a desk inside the classroom closet and made me work on my extra work and packets from the closet. 
I ended up spending 104 days in the closet, 113 days of lunch detentions. I also ended being bullied from 3rd grade to 8th grade because I wasn't able to a part of a friend group and it was very cliquey where I lived. At the end of the school year my mom went in to try and get her fired for neglect and abuse and nothing happened because she said it was part of her pills she was taking for her pregnancy and the side effects were mood swings, faking bullshit. She also told me I wouldn't amount to anything if I can't pass third grade how are you gonna make through life in general. Now I'm about to graduate high school this year and I have already been accepted into the naval academy. So she was very wrong. I have a few of my own math teacher had an issue with us having purses and stuff you have a book bag. You don't need an extra bag. When most of us who had multiple bags had one because of work after school or a gym slash swimming bag, etc. And we weren't just given lockers had to apply for them and wait a while to be approved. Apparently they wanted to stop in school drug deals. I usually kept a super small pocket book on me that was a first aid kit. I was the lifeguard for the swimming class and I'd keep extra menstrual products on hand with it. One day I was going through my bag and sat it on my desk. Keep in mind this thing is like a clutch and was in my book bag until I was looking for an extra pencil. I had a plethora of stuff on my desk. He comes over and starts to rave about these bags again. Except he opens mine and the only things I didn't have secured in the side pockets were tampons. So he opens it and goes to dump it on my desk and 425 tampons just fall out. I just cyanoid and said if you really needed one you can ask like every girl in the swimming class does. Sir. I don't know if he was just having a bad day or what, cause normally after his rant he'd just say to keep them under our desks and whatnot and move on. After that none of us heard his complaints though. I didn't even mean to rebel, I just liked having the first aid stuff in a designated bag, so I could always get it out for the swimming class easily point still not sure what he thought he'd accomplish by dumping it out though. Many people keep their phones in this, so if it hadn't been me and he damaged something like that I don't think parents or students we be all too pleased. In 6th grade I finished the school year with 20 or so unserved lunch detentions. My teacher carried them over to the next year much to my displeasure. So throughout the year the number kept going up instead of down. I found acceptance in being the class clown. By the end of 7th grade I hadn't seen the lunchroom once that year and had 50 unserved lunch detentions. So over the summer my friends would joke about how high I could get the number and since the detentions meant nothing to me, I made the decision to really push the envelope in 8th grade. Now the key was to straddle the line between extreme nuisance and expelled pupil. I began by never once in 8th grade wearing the school uniform. Every day, detention when I walked in 20 minutes late, detention, would put my feet on my desk every class, detention, argued about everything, detention, swore profusely as only sheety pubescent 8th graders do, detention, generally disruptive, detention, discovered all the school printers were hooked up to the computer lab, so you could choose which printers to send documents to. 500 pages of completely black images with a bonus, or boobs ever 50 or so pages printed to every printer in the building, detention. Left school and went to McDonald's the one day the detention teacher was sick, double detention. My religion teacher and I really got into it one day and her being somewhat new to the school, wasn't aware of my unending detention status, only that I was often in detention. So we argued, detention, I denied God's existence, detention, expressed my right to free speech, detention, why don't we make it 5? Fuck it make it 10. I replied, etc. By the end of that period she had given me 15 detentions. This inspired me to see how many I could get in one class and one day. My record was 18 in one class, religion teacher again, and 41 in one day, same day as the class record actually. At the midterm mark I had around 180 unserved detentions. At this point my school decided to change their detention policy and introduced Saturday morning detention 8am to noon. They also said anyone who got 10 detentions would have to serve a Saturday detention. Clearly this was aimed at me, because that would be the next 18 Saturdays roughly 4 and a half months. The rest of the school year. Have you spotted it? Do you see the mistake they made? 
they had made getting more detentions meaningless again. If I was already going to lose every Saturday between now and graduation what was to stop me, I was invincible. Now I wasn't about to give up my plans to see how high I could push the numbers just because of a silly policy change. I really let loose after this and was a flippant unruly nightmare student. Continued racking up detentions to the amusement of my peers and the displeasure of my teachers. After about 3 months of this, I had 350 detentions unserved. I'd already been tested and placed in the appropriate levels for my high school next year, so I stopped doing homework and wrote in stupid answers to every test. Grades dropped from A and B to D and F, but hey it was middle school who cared. Well that's where I faked up. Because that's when my dad gave a sheet. He didn't want to send me to the private school I was at, but my mom had insisted, so he thought it was funny the havoc I was causing. He knew I was just going through a rebellious stage and better now than as a druggie in high school. But when the grades dropped then he got mad like really scary mad. So with a month and a half of school left I was already grounded until the end of summer and under threat of being forced to repeat 8th grade unless I got my grades back up and stopped causing havoc at school thus ended the great detention heist. As Icarus I had flown too close to the sun and my wings of rebellion had been burnt to a crisp by the combined sons of my father and the school. I still got two or three detentions a day so when I graduated I had near 400 unserved detentions. A badge I wear with pride. Whenever I see people from middle school now, some near 20 years later, they still bring up how many I still owe the school and we laugh. This isn't a best way, just a really weird experience with a teacher I hate point around my last two years in school, we got a new French teacher. He was a sniveling weasel of a man who wanted everyone to like him, but was one, gutless and two, conniving. The kind of teacher who would hold a grudge and find ways to fuck up your day, but wouldn't do it against kids who were brave enough to speak up for themselves I didn't even take French, I took Spanish, but I had a grudge against this man because he tried to take over our debate club. We already had a debate club that was mostly student run with a teacher that just supervised. It was a little insular, but not because we didn't try to get people involved, it's just not that many people were interested. We were happy with how things were going, but the teacher didn't want to kick up a fuss because he wasn't on a permanent contract, so he folded. He actually ended up losing his job one year and getting it the year after when students delivered a petition to the vice principal. After several meetings where the entire team stopped going to meetings, we got him back and Mr. Weasel scurried away with his tail between his legs, so the faker starts his own debate club. He takes on a different style of competitions than we did and recruits from mostly younger students. Younger students were allowed on the regular debate team. They were mainly used as substitutes, which happened regularly enough, or just didn't want to deliver speeches, and instead did research, and acted as idea boards. The problem is, he writes their speeches for them. They tank hard, and most of the team ends up sitting in on our meetings, to learn how we do things, so they can actually do something. Point all of this is just to inform you of how Mr. Sheets didn't like to operate. The actual rule defiance came one morning when we were walking to church, a common practice in Irish Catholic schools. Despite uniforms being rather strict, there was a lot of freedom for students who did well, kept their head down, and helped out around the school. I was one of those students, and so I wore my own coat, for some reason we had school coats, and wore big headphones around my neck. Both of these were against the rules, and for any other teacher, I'd have taken them off point the trip had three teachers, the vice principal, the teacher who supervised debate, and Mr. Wanker. Both of these teachers walked straight by me as I said hi, and then Mr. Weasel pulls me over, and tells me to take off my headphones I look him dead in the eye, and tell him that the vice principal just walked by me, and said nothing about the headphones, that I wasn't going to take them off because we had already left the school, and that if he didn't like that he could take it up with her. I'm not scary by any means. At the time I was 110 pounds, and about 5, 6. I wasn't trying to threaten him, and this wasn't a violent school, where teachers get hurt, ever. But he looks at me like I just pulled a knife on him, and tried to mug him, turns around and walks away point I don't know if he did ever talk to the vice principal about it, but if he did it didn't go in his favor. A couple of days later, 
He pulls me out of class saying we need to talk. I was expecting to get suspended for talking back. Instead he faking apologized. Being a teacher is a hard job, so as much as I despised him, I said it was fine and went back to class. I never heard a word about my headphones again. The two weirdest things my school did was ban bike pants for girls and boxer shorts for boys. Due to kids going full on rebel and wearing them, laugh out loud first of all, to note, I grew up in Queensland, Northern Australia, and we had a school uniform, though realistically we only had a summer uniform as it was the tropics, we wore shorts all year round, and had a simple jacket we trotted out, when temp dropped below 20c, laugh out loud, now the bike pants was interesting as the parent and citizens council had originally okayed them for the girls to wear during sports instead of the original netball skirts. Anybody that grew up in Australia knows how notoriously short netball skirts can be and how difficult it can be to keep them down. This was one thing the girls of the school were actually quite happy with, but the principal vetoed this and implemented a skirt in conjunction with the existing netball skirts, and everybody hated this bear. In mind at this point bike pants were not banned, just not incorporated into the girls' sports uniform. Point the girls at the school collectively rebelled by wearing bike pants under their regular dress skirt and the sport. Netball skirt and or skirt. At this point the powers that be decided to ban them, but the girls collectively started playing hardball and saying how can you even see my underwear, you arguably could see them with the netball skirts, but certainly not with the dress skirt or skirt, unless one really looked or just accidentally saw the skirt lift at an inopportune moment, like wind etc. I have to admit the girls played hardball so well with this, especially as it was the result of a wanted rule change that everybody Parents etc. was cool with except the principal point the boys in boxer shorts. It was weird, but there was a fad at 1.4 guys to wear boxer shorts. Now we are not talking about the smaller boxer brief type, but instead these larger silk ones in various garish colors or looney tune characters and they'd often be longer than the school uniform shorts, thus they'd be poking out underneath the bottom of the shorts the school had plenty of other rules, no jewelry other than a watch, single pair of plain sleepers slash stud, they had to expand. That to include medic alert stuff though as I guess whoever made them up forgot about that stuff. But oddly I don't recall major jewelry rebelling point shoes had to be plain black, impervious leather wrappers however, but some girls always tried to get away with that by wearing dark purple shoelaces. I know I'm late to the party, but here's my story. My high school had assigned parking. When I got my spot it was pretty far away from the school, but it didn't matter too much to me because I like to walk and I like the cold. I live in Michigan. So it gets pretty cold. So one early dark and cold morning when there was enough snow to cover the parking lines I'm running late for a student council meeting. So in a rush I don't wipe away the snow to find out if I'm in the right space or not I just go into my meeting. Well later that day the principal calls a bunch of people down to the office for some reason and I'm on the list. On my way down to the office I see people who got there before me and they all are saying it's about parking tickets. Now I never parked in the wrong spot for the entire year, so you can imagine my surprise when I get a parking ticket. It turns out I was parked one spot away from where I was supposed to be farther away from the school. Well naturally I was livid, so I concoct a scheme to get my revenge. I go to the bank with the money for the ticket and exchange it for its amount in pennies. I put all the change in a bag and throw in a quarter in case there wasn't enough in there. So I walk into the office, bag in hand, and tell the secretary I'm there to pay my parking ticket. She says okay, and then asks for the money and I plop the bag down on the desk with a big clang noise. She immediately says the principal will like to see this, and I say okay, and that I have to leave and go to class. Before I walk out the principal walks in, and tells me I'll have to count all this in a very smug way. I turn right around and tell her that I counted it all when I put it in the bag and that the school owes me change and then I walk out. It was the best feeling ever. I never accounted that change. My senior year of high school I missed a day of school where we had a pet test. My gym teacher told me I could take it the next day of class. Next day of class we began our swim unit. So I waited out by the pool fully clothed, 
since I had to take my test. My friends were also with me fully clothed, because they forgot their swim clothes, but really they just didn't wanna swim. My teacher comes out and yells at everyone for trying to skip out on swimming and that it would count towards their participation points and when I tried telling him that I was supposed to take my test like he said. He went off on me too saying what happened to you? You were such a good kid and now you're being a slacker like these guys. Go get dressed. So I went and got changed but then decided screw him and changed back into my regular clothes and instead went to the cafeteria and had a snack. I then went and hung out in the bathroom until class was almost over at which point my friend texts me saying our teacher was looking for me. I went to the nurse's office, signed in, told her I had a stomach ache, had a few crackers and some water, got a pass back to class. When I came back I gave him the pass telling him I was throwing up, so I went to the nurse. He then decided he would go check the nurse's sign in slash out sheet to see what time I got there. He came back like 5 minutes later interrogating me at which point I just decided I'd take the punishment. I was cool with the dean though, and he knew I was a good kid, so he dropped a few of my detentions for me. Point long story short I skipped gym, got a nurse's pass, gym teacher investigated, got 15 detentions cut down to 10. So, although not as extreme as Texan man over there, once I did something, while a substitute was in class. She was a real pain and a stickler for rules. She wouldn't let people do anything the original teacher would let us do. Even if there is a sign that says we could do it, I'm being serious. Granted, it was in Spanish, but it was a Spanish class. Dafuk do you expect? There was one time where she would not let us drink water. She made it into such a big deal, like it was total in a key to unscrew a frickin' Daphne because of the fact that the classroom was a volcano. Once, she got into a rant with one kid who took a sip of water. I got pissed, so I cleared my throat to get as much attention as I could. I pulled out a Dr. Pepper and carefully unscrewed it. By this point, the majority of the class was watching me with wide eyes. The sub gets mad because of water. What would she do if I had so damn? The sub was actually too busy to notice me slowly unscrewing the bottle. She was still berating a kid about drinking water. I flip her off and just duck a nice long sip as the rest of the class start giggling a little. The kid who's getting scolded is trying not to laugh as he sees me just downing the soda. Finally, after half the bottle's gone, I re-screwed it and put it back up. Finally, the sub stops to look around and sees that everyone's staring at me. She looks at me as I happily sit in my seat. Of course, she shrugs, thinks nothing of it, and finishes up her scold. One of my brightest shiny moments. More of a personal anecdote that I'm really proud of and the pettiest thing I've done in my life. I've seen more flamboyant or creative rebellions I can expand on, but this is the one I wanted to share because I never saw anyone take it to this extreme point first year in high school. I had this teacher, Miss S, we'll call her. Miss S had issues with people falling behind on their work and would do nothing to help you when you did. She would breathe down your neck about a late assignment, even insisting you finish it before the end of the day in other teacher's classes, when she'd demand it by lunch. Actually faking up people's education by making them miss their instructional period because you'd be working on fairly tight deadlines a whole semester of this, and I was pretty sick of it, and realized one of my electives the next year, to my despair, was also with her the difference. However, was that it was a work at your own pace course, meaning as long as you were done the workload by the end of the semester, no one cared so, despite her, I finished every single page of it in one week, save one. I denied myself sleep and frequently time to eat, and would hand in a small novel a worth of answers that would be 100% almost every time, I think I got a few questions wrong near the end, when I started getting sloppy, once I had finished everything, there was one more test, to go wrap that up, hand it in, and have a free period for the rest of the year, instead, the test sat on my desk for the rest of the semester, totally under shade, for months, I slept at my desk, played on my DS, and otherwise made a silent nuisance of myself without ever breaking school rules. When the principal, and later my mother, who had the same reaction, at the time was called in, 
to force me to do the test, I explained that it was work at your own pace, and that it was the last test the rest of the course was done. Upon learning this, and seeing my grade was an easier slash a plus, even if I literally didn't hand that test in, he told the teacher he saw nothing wrong with it, and that as long as I wasn't explicitly a distraction to other students, the purpose of the course was that I take it at me own pace anyway. At the end of the year, I powered through the test in the morning, put it on her table, and went home. I didn't tell her why I did it, and kept responding with the fact I just didn't feel like it today. I wasn't anti-authority by any stretch, just anti-dickhead and would get a B in my bonnet about perceived injustices or signs of unfairness or power tripping by authority figures. Oh I got a good one point my older brother and I went to this charter school that was pretty much run by a cult like church we were not a part of. We had to wear uniforms, our work were packets we had to fill out in cubicle, ECT, very unorthodox school and quite depressing. It sucked. Royally point it was his senior year and a few weeks before he graduated they discovered he had never written in our journals we were supposed to write in every day. It is important to note that we were allowed to write anything we wanted in it, we could even swear. This is important. Well they decided to be total dicks and say it counted toward his English credits and by not doing it he couldn't graduate. They allowed him to quickly make them up, write only half a page instead of a full page, as long as he had it done before the end of the school year in a few weeks. So he did point however, what he turned in was pure but real evil. Realizing he was graduating, and wouldn't be controlled by those as holes, had caused a dam, to break and all the hostility and hatred poured out as the most vile. Faked up and insulting sheet onto the pages of this journal, most of which was specifically directed at the school itself, and the faked up staff. To clarify, these people in this school sucked, and totally deserved this several times over. And it's not like it was just us, we are still friends with a few people from then, and we still joke about what a sheet hole it was, he showed it to me, and a few friends, before turning it in. The one bit I remember was, and please inform the school staff that it will now cost more than a nickel to fact my dog point they had to accept it as the current rule was we could write anything, and he had written all of the required pages. He graduated. They couldn't stop him point I had summer school after that year. We had journals. We couldn't swear, and we had stupid as pre-probed topics. If found a school that was 1000 times better and ended up going there and that hellhole closed a few years later the end. My group of friends still has a reputation with some of the faculty at my catholic high school for being the reason for a lot of new slash oddly specific rules such as only wearing one, one, black or brown belt and that only matching shoes can be worn at school regardless of whether or not the individual shoes follow the dress code point but our absolute best happened during junior or senior year. When the cafeteria food and workers were taken over by a hired outside company, the quality and variety of food went down, prices went up, and long time favorite workers lost their jobs. But most people were mad at the 25 cent increase for a can of soda. So, we started jokingly talking about undercutting the cafeteria and selling soda ourselves. Later that day, I was talking with my buddy, and he was like, but we should really do this, right? To which I replied, abso faking lootly, when we first started, the VP, who was very familiar with our antics, figured that we'd get lazy and quit, and the problem would solve itself. Normally, he'd be right. But after a couple of days selling out of the couple of boxes of cans on ice we brought each day, and surprisingly making some money, we invested our earnings back into the business. More coolers, with greater variety of both the Coke and Pepsi products, and we got friends in other lunch periods to cover those periods. The other students loved it, and found other ways to rebel against the new food providers, and their leader, Dr. Lunch, who gave himself the name thinking it would be endearing to the students, but ended up fitting our made-up supervillain caricature of him perfectly. When things began really picking up steam and we added snacks to our menu, Dr. Lunch ratted us out and complained to our VP, threatening a lawsuit against the school since the contract contained a non-compete agreement. So, our good old VP took us aside one day after our lunch shift and leveled with us that he was impressed with our determination, initiative, and effectiveness, but we'd reached our Rubicon. 
we had to either give up the business or lose it and get the school involved in a costly lawsuit slash settlement that Dr. Lunch would inevitably win. So we backed off, but to this day the school rules contain a strict rule that students may not compete with any school vendors in any kind of profit-seeking endeavor. In fourth year, or grade 10, our school had made so many rules about what you could do at lunch that in the end all we could do was stand around and talk, nothing else point so one day a bunch of us were crowded in a small section of the schoolyard that was like an awning under the building and had stairs at the back to sit. The place is crowded and a large circle forms as it tends to do in schoolyards. Then people then start nudging each other and try to push each other into the center of the circle. One of the guys gets pushed in, and then when he tries to get out everyone crowds in and starts pushing him around the circle, but only enough to keep him off balance. This gets shut down pretty quickly by one of the strict teachers who was a bit of a freak to be honest. She once accused a student of slapping her, but and said she could report him for sexual assault. He never even touched her, wasn't even next to her. Anyway, after this she forces us out into the main part of the yard saying that we can't stand in large circles. We asked her what exactly she meant by a large circle, was it loc 4, comma, 5 people of maybe more. Giving a typical teacher line she tells us we should know what she means and that we can figure it out ourselves. We give up on the circle, but being completely bored and teenagers we just reform in the shape of a square. We thought it was a pretty good idea, she never said anything about squares, so we figured we'd test the boundaries for a kick. This too is also got shut down by the same teacher. One of the guys asks her what shapes we can stand in, if we can't be in circles or squares. The teacher told him, if he didn't want detention then he'd better stop acting funny asking silly questions. Most of us on the yard are pretty done at this point, everyone from the square dispersed across the yard telling other people about how we can't stand in circles or anything else so all the groups scattered across the yard slowly break up as part of some combined joke to the whole situation. Honestly the situation was a little tense, but this just kind of added to the humor, what else could they do at this point? So to add to the joke some people start shushing each other, this was because of earlier during the lunch break, where we had all been shushed by teachers for talking too loudly forcing us all to whisper, or only speak to people immediately next to you, resulting in everyone becoming silent. Only about 80% of people actually took part, but the silence naturally caused other people from talking, as if something had happened. The teachers thought something was up, and started looking around the yard for the shushes. Suddenly someone on the back of the yard yells out change places like the future in the episode where Fry and Bender get sent for a programming. Somehow in unison nearly everyone in the yard moves to a new spot on their own facing random directions. Some people just started standing right in front of a wall staring at it. Some people were just walking inside purely because of how weird the situation was at this point the teachers start freaking out telling people to stop so some of us play stupid and say stop what? We're literally doing nothing. The teachers tell everyone to go inside immediately and some people get pulled by the teachers as suspected conspirators including the group that left the yard point a few minutes later the bell rings and we all head to our next class feeling giddy. During the class an announcement was made over the intercom with a list of students who had to report to the principal's office immediately. The list gets called out and I hear my name. My English teacher laughed looking at me curiously at me w point b. Why are you getting called out? What did you do? You never do a thing he meant well but it stang a little and got a laugh out of the class. I'll admit I was pretty scared going down to the principal's office but thought it was funny that I got called out with the regular troublemakers. About 10 students are there and we have a back and forth with the principal and one of the teachers, not the mean one, about what had happened. Apparently the teacher on the yard said that we had harassed her and psychologically bullied her which was very serious the whole thing was ridiculous and we knew it. We managed to hold our ground and most of us were sent back to class with a warning with a few people given detention point in the end though nothing happened because a few parents complained including mine we were even allowed onto the astroturf and rugby pitch during lunch afterwards sorry for the long read hope you enjoyed this happened in high school years ago it was the friday before we had a week off from school and i was hanging about with some friends by the lockers 
a guy I played basketball with come up to me and asked if I wanted to join, and it would cost me 5 euros. Not knowing what it was, but trusting him, I pulled out the money and gave it to him point over the holiday I totally forgot about it, but when I arrived at school the Monday after my mate came up to me during the first break and told me to open my backpack. He quickly opened his one up and transferred to smaller bags from his backpack to mine and told me to be in our auditorium during lunch. I checked the smaller bags and noticed he were full of bouncing balls lunch was from 12.50 to 13.20. Just before 12 o'clock everybody in there, around 500 students, got quit because they knew something was up. At precisely 1300 hours someone blew in their horn and everybody started throwing bouncing balls around. We had about a thousand of them point after a few minutes of throwing and screaming the principal came in jumped on a table and told everyone to stop. We stopped for 10 seconds before everyone used the principal as target practice. When everyone calmed down the principal, still standing on a table, called a guy over who was filming the whole thing with a camera, this was before smartphones, and threatened to expel him for a week 12 other guys lined up with him, including me, and asked if we could have a week off as well. The principal knew he couldn't do this, and told us to never do something like that again, and if we cleaned up the mess we were good to go. Obviously everyone already had their pockets full of bouncing balls, so we just sat down and laughed about it for the rest of lunch. Point TLDR, guy buys 1000 bouncing balls on the internet and throws them around during lunch at high school. Point edit. 1300 bouncing balls, and I got a clip from YouTube HTTPS, slash slash yauta point b slash d57 square ru armjk. Not to brag, but I was responsible for the rewriting of three different dress codes in my middle school. For reference this was circa 2002 to 2003 point, when I was in 7th grade we had a no open toe shoe rule. Might not seem like a big deal, but I lived in as, and we wore flip flops year round. In fact I only owned one pair of non flip flop shoes. So I got these backless van sneakers, basically sneaker mules they were ugly as sin, but I was 13 and though I knew what fashion was. Hack sack was popular at the time and I accidentally kicked one of shoes off while playing, and it landed in a reservoir that was normally empty, but we had just gotten our winter rain, and it was about 10 feet in diameter, and about 2 feet deep. I had to miss class, so I could wait by this pond for my shoe to float to the edge to get it, then I had to spend about 2 hours in the girls bathroom drying it under the hand dryer the next year change the dress code to no open back shoes, point 2, but for some reason left out the part about no open toe shoes, so 8th grade rolls around, it's hot and I don't want to wear sneakers or boots anymore, so I wear flip flops and just tied a piece of yarn around the back of the heel giving them a pseudo heel strap and this making them technically non open heeled shoes. Got called out on that, and had to sit in the principal's office until my mom brought me new shoes. The following year the rule book listed specific styles with sample pictures of acceptable and unacceptable footwear my pseudo heel strap slash flip, flop combo was specifically prohibited 3. And finally the one I'm most proud of. School dress code said that no skin should not be exposed between the top of pants and the bottom of t-shirts when both arms are raised overhead. Well this was 2002 slash 3 and hip huggers were all the rage, and practically the only style of pants you could find that fit teen girls. It was almost impossible for girls not to have their midriff exposed when leaning over or reaching up. Girls spend most of the day pulling their shirts down, and their pants up. To be clear I'm not defending this look in retrospect it was absolutely hideous, while the boys never had to worry. Towards the end of my 8th grade year, Teachers started cracking down on girls and making them raise both of their hands in the air if they even saw a flash of skin. When girls would do the test their shirts would inevitably ride up to their waist exposing a good 3 to 4 inches. Us girls rebelled by wearing XXL men's t-shirts. One day one of the teachers called us out on our sloppy oversized shirts. The girls argued with the teacher about the unfairness of the rule, but our teacher kept arguing that the rule was put in place so we would look presentable. I got pissed at the unfairness and stupidity of this rule and I suddenly stood up and raised both of my hands in the air and said who the hell walks around like this? The rule should at least be that we only raise one hand because that's an action we do every day in class. 
Funny thing was that even with my XL t-shirt on I still had exposed skin. When I raised both of my hands the next year the code was rewritten that students needed to only raise one hand to pass the midriff test and that more than one inch of skin needed to be exposed to get written up for it. I found out later from this teacher that my classmates and I argued with that she thought the rule was dumb too, but as a teacher had to enforce and back it. She thanked me for giving her a good argument and a solution to go the administration with to get it changed. Our school laptops were completely locked down, except for the bias. I bought a flash drive and made it bootable. Essentially made it so that I could do anything I wanted on my school issued laptop. This got me around everything too because the web filter was through a proxy and connection to the Wi-Fi was by MAC address. So I had unrestricted internet access. On top of that all of the devices in the school were on that network with little to no safeguards. I won't admit to everything I did but a couple things were using the auditorium projector for playing video games during lunch, changing the language of the printers, and projecting things during school slash district assemblies, and boring lectures when the tech guy looked at my laptop he could find nothing, because I would remove the flash drive. They couldn't prove it either, because I didn't even have to change the boot order. So one day the tech guy asks me to be an ethical hacker and tell him how I did it in exchange for a pardon and being allowed to continue booting from my flash drive. I thought it was cool, so I did it. I told him everything and found a ton of stuff. He fixed nothing because no kid is ever going to know how to do this stuff. Point I graduated a couple years ago. Just a few weeks ago my school made national headlines for getting infected by a ransomware virus that got every desktop computer on the network. I guess he should have listened to me. I realize it's long, but read it. We had the absolute worst history in geography teacher. Let's give him the alibi Mr. Serik. Pronounced Serik. He was famous for saying at the beginning of every lesson my expectation when marking the role is no talking. We would all mouth it silently every lesson point he was terrible. The class average dropped by 30% when he showed up. He made multiple students cry and was ultimately fired. Once two boys were having a full on fight, wrestling on the floor, and he told two girls sitting dead silently at the front to stop talking. Another time a girl had a safety pin to hold up her skirt and he confiscated it because it was unsafe. She physically had to hold up her skirt for the rest of the day point anyway. His arch nemesis was an absolute legend who we'll call Kate. She was an athlete, had some learning difficulties, and was an unapologetic lesbian in a very homophobic Christian school. Teachers either loved or despised her. There was no in between point one day we had a test with Mr. Serik, and for some reason he thought he'd be more liked if the test was online instead of on paper. It was a sheet show. I don't know what he used, but entire questions were missing, pages would reload, and entire answers would be lost, and he wouldn't take any questions. So there was a lot of outraged chatter throughout the class. I was moved three times during the test. At the end of the test Serik decided it would be a good time to chew out the entire class, who were already rearing to break his knees during this. Kate was moved seven times. At the time she had certain sport injuries and had two crutches and a moon boot. Finally she'd had enough and so while Serik was ranting she pushed open the window and climbed out. The class lost it, but Serik, being a tone deaf monkey, was clueless. After about two minutes, Kate crippled her way back to the window and the class passed her crutches out to her. She composed herself, flicked Mr. Serik the bird on both hands, and hobbled away. He had no clue point Kate got suspended for that, but it was the greatest instance of a student standing up to Serik, and we we all inspired by Kate's true lack of facts to give about the rules. In 11th grade showed up 15 minutes late to first class almost every day for a month from being irresponsible, staying up late, not waking up on time, etc. Was given detentions, in school suspensions, two parent teacher conferences, and idle threat of potential expulsion by the end of that month point I thought it was so ridiculously stupid back then, that they were making such a big deal about me conforming over 15 insignificant minutes, that I found the motivation to start going to bed properly, getting up at the same time reliably. And now arrived to school at the same time every day, to intentionally enter first class 15 minutes late for the rest of the school year. 
I was initially given more disciplinary measures by the VP, but first class teacher eventually stopped reporting me, moved my assigned seat next to the door, and left the door open, so I wouldn't disturb the class. By the end of the calendar year, no one cared anymore, except the VP who gave me agitated SMH looks, and those looks kept me motivated to keep doing it fuck him. As an adult, I get it, it's disruptive and could lead other students to seek equal treatment, blah blah blah. That teacher was usually cool as fuck, and reported me for tardiness for those reasons listed above, but when it was clear I wasn't gonna stop I felt like respected me for going up against the man, and... Before it's asked, one of my parents was a dysfunctional alcoholic, the other worked 12 to 16 hour nights as an IQ nurse, and I have 4 siblings. My parents did not have any facts to give, and my mom even encouraged, because of how anti-authority she is fake and hippies. I forgot about this, in my senior app English class, we had a V intense teacher and pretty endless testing practice. Studying for the test, but nonetheless practicing critical writing often for 2 hour, essay answer, lit theory pop quizzes, that made up the entirety of our grades. Our schedule had been pushed, because we hadn't been prepared last class, and by today still we hadn't had not read the book. There had been a bout of fire alarms in our school during 5th period over the past month, I think because they were testing our new fire drill procedure or something. So this day, my friend said during lunch, if there's a test question on the board today, I'm going to set the fire alarm. Walking to class, everyone was stressed about the same thing, it seemed like no one had read the book. Lo and behold, I don't even remember which pseudo-feminist fiction w a birdcage metaphor we were reading that week, but I remember the collective sense of dread felt when we walked through the doorway and saw we were, in fact, being tested on something it felt like no one was prepared for. The teacher was sarcastically explaining how she knew we didn't read this book, and she was sick of us not taking it seriously well let's see blah blah wasting time. Everyone is pulling out paper and pens, and moving their backpacks, but I notice my friend hasn't moved. So I'm just was watching my friend trying to jump in at any pause in the teacher's talking to ask to run back out, she had forgotten something on the quad at lunch. Teacher just gestured fo, and kept talking at us. So my girl goes, and I'm with my other friend like uhh, she's nervously laughing, things are settling down. We start copying the paragraph length question down from the whiteboard point its fence. I'm still laughing quietly, because I can hear my friend saying oh my god under her breath behind me, and things like I mean I'm not even going to try this, and people are catching on there's something going on plus no one is concentrating, because no one's prepared then the girl comes back she was very pale tall blonde and now her face was a little pink, and she looked a little anxious, but she breezed in down the center aisle, and plopped into her. Seat reached in her bag grabbed her water bottle and began drinking. Not setting up a page or anything at all for the test. The teacher was studying for a doctorate or something in her free time, so she didn't notice anything. But when I caught this girl's eye, she just raised her eyebrows and faking grinned at me. And I turned behind me to make a face at my other friend. And now the whole class is trying to communicate W their eyes and coughs and we are waiting. And the faking alarm goes off. It was like a wash as everyone stood up at our desks and just sighed W relief and the girl has the face like a triumphant cat. We are in mute hysterics. The teacher's already over it grabbing the biggest pole W a laminated flag of our room number on it probably talking at us as we're walking saying it was our lucky day. Joining the absolute sea of voices and slow walking bodies as the whole school started to head from their rooms to the football field. Around 2000 students. No one batting an eye, because it's already been established. This was an issue, that needed to be fixed by the administration yada yada yada, a mass exodus from class mood to teen mood all around us. I'm walking w these girls like Ocean's Eleven, smirking our ass off. My friend from behind me is now just exclaiming oh my god, at an audible decibel and the my friend who did it is talking so low and fast through her teeth to us asking what did you do saying chill 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 then explaining yeah no chill oh my god I just went to the empty guy's bathroom w a bald up piece of paper and lit it on fire oh my god I know I don't know I blew k in it, I saw a maintenance person was nearby, so I left it in the trash. Well like what the fuck, and she's like omg omg I know shut up omg no one can know omg omg, and we are like damn, 
so the new smoke detectors work and everyone in our class is asking her, and she's just shaking her head no one ever got in trouble or found out. This was an outdoor high school, all bungalows and a generally unmanageable vibe, overall we'd be disciplined on an unpredictable scale, that ran from teachers, that were eerily chill to unsuccessfully manipulative to borderline cruel and intolerant but still, arson wasn't something we wanted to pop on anyone's radar. I don't know how many people really knew what happened that day, or if we really understood how psychotic that was, at the time it was so smooth, and went down without any problem. It wasn't even the wildest thing to have happened while in that high school. But I am definitely felt proud to have supported some sleuthy rebellion under the guise of sheep mentality. The perfect cover was another erroneous drill. Akira school sanctioned parade of mass disruption. That meant we'd get to spend the period having a nice lie in the football field astro turf hanging out with your friends from outside of class. Haven't thought much of it since. So I graduated from high school in May, while most schools in my area were still in session until mid-June. During this lovely window of opportunity I made some friends at one of these neighboring schools. One day we hatched a plan to sneak me in and pretend I was a student at the school point I arrived in the morning with all the students and found the handful of friends I had previously planned this with, I use quotes, because they seemed rather surprised I even showed up in the first place, and follow them, right in blending in with the masses. Obviously home a room would be a problem, so I had the great idea, to hide in the bathroom until first period, where people had planned to sneak me into a study hall. Mission success. More and more people are hearing about this secret mission as time passes. It was a very small town, everyone knows everyone, so it wasn't long before that became a problem point the main concern was avoiding administration, which seemingly patrolled the hallways like the Gestapo. After study hall ended, I was essentially shadowing a few friends, to hide from the principal scouring the passing students, in order to reach a teacher whom the students believed, would get a kick out of the sneak. Luckily they were right and she had a great laugh, and basically kept me safe and sound for two periods hiding me from passing administrators. She was the best teachers I never had. Unfortunately all the fun came to a head when too many people had caught wind of the fun, and began posting on Twitter to bring me here or wherever. Well, apparently the school has a Twitter account run by the vice principal, and he spotted all the activity, and swiftly found me in a study hall hiding with some homies. He escorted me down, to Captain Principal Point the principal, of course, tried to scold me, but failed mainly due to my cavalier attitude and consistent laughing at the fact that they let a random person walk their halls for 3, full 45 minute periods. They let me go, after threatening to call the cops, like they weren't the ones who dropped the ball point not more than a week later, the school began locking the doors after home a room, and required the students, to ring a doorbell to be let inside the school, if they were late, with signs posted on every door. So your welcome school, you needed a security upgrade anyway, TLDR, had friends sneak me into their high school, after I had graduated early. Forced the school to reevaluate their security measures. This was somewhat of an accidental rebellion, but a rebellion nonetheless in the midst of some of the major US school shootings about 5 years ago. Our school banned all backpacks, except transparent or mesh bags. Most of the kids either didn't have the money or the desire to buy a new backpack, so the school confiscated backpacks, even though we didn't have lockers. So now you have dozens of angry teenagers carrying around 50 pounds of textbooks with no backpacks I was one of the ones who actually bought a mesh bag and was fine with following the rules and flying under the radar. I was also in student government and was involved with decorating our classes float for a town parade. I made a confetti cannon out of an M16 style paintball gun that I had and brought it to school to drop it off with a school counselor for the parade later that day point. When I got to the school, the counselor wasn't there. So now I've got basically a disassembled M16 in my backpack and no other faculty has any idea that I was supposed to bring it. In order to keep from having any issues, I stupidly decided to just carry the bag around with me and keep it on my person. I carried it with me for a few hours, then dropped it off with the counselor, as soon as she got there. She asked where I had kept it, and when I told her that I had just been carrying it around and no one had noticed a disassembled rifle in a student's mesh backpack, she immediately let the principal know. 
All of a sudden, we didn't have the mesh backpack rule anymore. Point I'd love to say I was the sole reason for this change, but it turns out very few people actually supported it. Regardless, this and my school's designated pizza delivery table are two of my most proud accomplishments TLDR. I accidentally overturned my school's backpack rule by bringing an M16-esque paintball gun to class. I doubt this will get seen, but I live in Ireland, and over here about 90% of schools are Catholic schools so all of the school rules you seem to be complaining about are completely commonplace here for example, I'm referring to high school, note, about 60-70% of schools in Ireland are not co-ed so are either all boys or all girls schools phones are banned in almost all schools and the general rule is that if you are seen with a phone even just checking the time or if you get a notification in class then your phone gets confiscated for seven days and many schools require your parents to come in and collect your phone for you after the seven days some schools even charge a penalty of about twenty dollars because it must be kept in a safe for either seven days boys are not allowed to get and hair could wear your hair is longer than your shoulders or shorter than two millimeters you also can't dye your hair any unnatural colors this means only blonde brown black ginger and brunette were acceptable the dyeing rule is for both boys and girls the punishment is you get suspended until your hair is fixed point school uniform must be worn and worn correctly at all times so your tie must be on you have to wear a pair of approved shoes and black socks, although many schools don't enforce the sock rule. If you come to school wearing the wrong uniform then you either get sent home to change, given some from lost, and found or do a 45 minute detention after school. Girls must wear school skirts and the length depends on where you live in the country. Where I live the skirt goes down to your ankles, but in other places it's to your knees etc. Most schools also have school jackets and they are the only jacket you're allowed to wear while walking to slash from school or your normal jacket gets confiscated. Boys aren't allowed any piercings at all, and girls are only allowed studs on their lobes. The principal will make you take out your piercing. If you have it in point most schools have two different types of detentions. One is usually about 40 minutes after school some day every week for minor things such as not wearing a tie or being late to class. The other is two hours long and usually on a Saturday morning or Friday evening to make it as inconvenient as possible and this is for more major things such as multiple incomplete homeworks or skipping a short detention. We have three subjects that are compulsory for every student in the country to do for leaving cert. Our version of SATs except no multiple choice or essays and questions etc. These are English, Irish and maths. And if you fail any of these subjects in the leaving cert you fail the entire leaving cert and can't go to college unless you repeat. Also if you get caught cheating in the leaving cert you get banned from all state exams for 5 to 10 years. So you can't get your driver's license or go to college any other government run exam point I'm sure there's many more. But to all of us here they're normal. So I can't think of them. We don't find them that strict. Because if you follow the rules then most people get on very well with teachers. 